Last December 2019, my colleagues Bohim, Tony, and I were shocked to learn that the Philippines scored lowest in reading and second lowest in math and science in the 2018 Program for International Student Assessment. We asked why, what can we do? Do we have the courage to act to make a difference? All of us are committed to the use of ICTs for development. All of us have experience with e-learning, iSchools, digital solutions. So we decided to go for it. We thought we had a year to plan and to locate funds. Then COVID happened. We fast-tracked our thinking. We launched Kaisipan to transform learning and teaching through digital educational solutions. Our mission is digital literacy for all Filipino educators. We define digital literacy as a set of cognitive, technical, and humanizing capabilities to use ICTs to I learn, I create, and I share. Our vision and our mission will help Tulung Edukalidad achieve quality education for Filipino students. To contribute to the UN Sustainable Development Goal 4, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education by 2030. For teachers, we offer a master teacher courses for digital learning and teaching with CPD units. For students, we offer coding, developing your growth mindset, social emotional skills, digital citizenship, civic reasoning, financial literacy. For teachers and students, we offer a choice of leverage devices that also mean locating sponsors and donors. We plan to see progress from I learn to I create to I share. For impact, we assess school e readiness, digital literacy, and intelligence. We assess reactions, learning outcomes, behavior, impact. For us, Chains are bonds of unity, teamwork, and strength. Kaisipan is a giving back project. We invite you, Kaibigan, Kaisipan, think with us and act with us to empower educators to transform teaching and learning. Digital literacy for all. I learn, I create, I share. Kaya natin to. Global Educator Katipunera. My name is Maria Africa Bibi. The midwife declared when I was born that I will travel the world and travel the world I did. First as a Peace Corps volunteer, as an American assigned to the Philippines. After graduate school at Stanford, I accompanied my husband James to his US Department of State Foreign Service postings in the Sudan, Philippines, Liberia, Oregon, Washington, D.C., and South Africa. At each location, I secured a job in international development. After Africa, I developed and led Afghan equality alliances around the use of ICTs to improve the quality of higher education in Afghanistan. By now, you can appreciate why I identify as a global, as educator. When I did my work in Afghanistan, people asked, aren't you afraid of IED, dying from an improvised explosive device? My response, people die while watching TV. I'd prefer dying while making a difference. Where does this courage come from? My Lola used to tell me, don't forget you have the blood of a Katipunera. Your Apong one was a runner for the Katipunan when he was 10. He memorized the messages and then run to deliver the message evading enemy fire. I imagine I inherited the predisposition to have courage, courage to manage fear, courage to build my confidence, courage to perceive a worthy purpose. For example, I believe that it was worthy for Filipinas to tell their own stories. So as a board member of the Filipino Women's Network, I edited three books about Filipino women and leadership. Last December, 2019, my colleagues, Boeing, Tony, and I were shocked to learn that the Philippines scored lowest in reading and second lowest in math and science in the 2018 program for student assessment. 
We ask why. What can we do? Do we have the courage to act to make a difference? All of us are committed to the use of ICTs for development. All of us have experience with e-learning, iSchools, digital solutions, so we decided to go for it. We thought we'd, we had a year to plan, then COVID happened. We fast track our thinking. We launched Kaisipan to transform teaching and learning in the Philippines through digital education solutions. Our mission is digital literacy for all Filipino educators. We define digital literacy as a set of cognitive, technical, and humanizing capabilities to use information and communication te technologies to I learn, I create, and I share. Kaisipan is a giving back project. We invite you, Kaibigan, Kaisipan, think with us and act with us to empower educators to transform teaching and learning to help Sulung Edukalidad achieve quality education for Filipino students, to contribute to the UN Sustainable Development Goal, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education by 2013. Digital literacy for all. I learn, I create, I share. Kaya natin to. Hi everyone, I'm Nomu Sakenina from South Africa. I'm coming to Paris! I'm preparing my suitcase for you too. It's the night before I get on the plane to fly to Paris. I cannot wait to be with all of you. I'm so excited to get to E2 Paris. E2 is a live version of the Microsoft Educator community. I feel like I know people so well and I've never met them at all. And we met in the lobby like arms wide open and we had I teach computer science instructional technology English teacher head of digital learning and instructional technology specialist I know it's going to be an absolutely amazing experience I will learn so much from everybody really looking forward to the collaboration taking it all in and becoming a better educator and learning from you all I cannot wait to share the experience, learn with you, ask lots of questions, and grow professionally. Working with different teachers from different countries. To share and learn and collaborate with all of the amazing educators. That's what E2 is all about. Hopefully bringing the world a little closer and celebrating the passion and commitment that all of you have. Teaching is an activity that can't be alone. You can be a painter or a sculptor, you can be a poet, but you can't be a teacher alone. E2 is a good step for me to get connected with other educators. A lot of knowledge from here that I can take to my country. It was kind of magical because that was a great opportunity to change everything about my teaching practices. There's always something new that you can learn. There's always something that can innovate what you're doing. I thought it was just amazing the way that we could just work together. It's a real incredible opportunity and I'm just humbled. Superb. <laughs> Welcome to the Microsoft Innovative Educator, or MIE, Train the Trainer Academy. This learning path is designed for teacher trainers and those who are responsible for training educators on the integration of technology in the classroom. The goal is to provide trainers exposure to the many Microsoft technologies and resources that support student-centered learning based on authentic problems and projects while aligning to 21st century skills, the ISTE standards for students and educators, and the UNESCO ICT competency framework for teachers. The overall intent is to introduce trainers to the training materials through hands-on activities so that trainers may enable teachers to get more out of the Microsoft products they have today and to take advantage of the many free tools available to students and educators. Let's first find out what being a Microsoft Innov Educator is all about. There is a feeling of being valued and understood as an educator. My vision of education is us learning together. It's the idea that each day we come, whether you're in the nicest place or the hardest place. My students benefit from whatever I learned on the global platform. We are able to break the barrier of cultural differences, of language differences, and we are able to reach out 
to each and everyone out there. It's super important to bring in the world into our classroom and for us to come out in the world. And there are so many different ways we can do that. The Microsoft Educator community has really helped to get all of the teachers on board for a common goal. The MIE program gets you out of your comfort zone. Every day is a day of learning for me. We've been friends for long. And finally today I've got to meet you face to face. That's right. There this is magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my students walk away from my classroom being citizens of the world. If you just have the devotion, passion, and a bit of creativity. <laughs> Come on! At the end of the day, it is about engagement. I mean, there are endless possibilities. Now that you've heard what it means to be a Microsoft Innovative Educator, be sure that you're following us on all of our social media handles. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Pinterest. Always use the hashtag MicrosoftEDU. This training starts with setting a new tone through a journey for innovation by dabbling in new tools, by doing old things in new ways, and doing new things in new ways. As you think about today's classroom, you want to think who owns the learning in the classroom? What is the role of today's teacher and what is the role of today's student? So as we explore through all of the various tools that are available to teachers everywhere, think about these three core questions. The agenda of this training includes learning about the many Microsoft tools available to educators, including Office 365, Teams, Windows, OneNote, and so much more. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Last December 2019, my colleagues, Bohim, Tony, and I were shocked to learn that the Philippines scored lowest in reading and second lowest in math and science in the 2018 Program for International Student Assessment. We asked why, what can we do? Do we have the courage to act to make a difference? All of us are committed to the use of ICTs for development. All of us have experience with e-learning, iSchools, digital solutions. So we decided to go for it. We thought we had a year to plan and to locate funds. Then COVID happened. We fast-track our thinking. We launched Kaisipan to transform learning and teaching through digital educational solutions. Our mission is digital literacy for all Filipino educators. We define digital literacy as a set of cognitive, technical, and humanizing capabilities to use ICTs to I-learn, I-create, and I-share. 
our vision and our mission will help Sulung Edukalidad achieve quality education for Filipino students to contribute to the UN Sustainable Development Goal 4 to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education by 2030. For teachers, we offer master teacher courses for digital learning and teaching with CPD units. For students, we offer coding, developing your growth mindset, social emotional skills, digital citizenship, civic reasoning, financial literacy. For teachers and students, we offer a choice of leverage devices that also mean locating sponsors and donors. We plan to see progress from I learn to I create to I share. For impact, we assess school e-readiness, digital literacy, and intelligence. We assess reactions, learning outcomes, behavior, impact. For us, chains are bonds of unity, teamwork, and strength. Kaisipan is a giving back project. We invite you, Kaibigan, Kaisipan, think with us and act with us to empower educators to transform teaching and learning. Digital literacy for all. I learn, I create, I share. Kaya natin to. Yes, good morning. Good morning, everyone, to our ever beloved viewers and participants. Today is Saturday, April 4, and this is the final day of our international webinar. Magandang po sa ating lahat. And again, we are now in the final day of our international digital capability in the 21st century education, legal and mental. And for today, we are your host. I'm Ma'am Mary Ann Salamanca Valdez. partner will be with us later, Sir Jerwin Perez. This event is sponsored by Steya, Power Incorporated, Kaisipan Incorporated, and Ma A quote by Dennis Waitley says, never Learning experience. To our resource speakers, Bob Steya, Office and Education Leaders, and to our fellow teachers, good morning again to all of us. Na nakapag breakfast na po ang lahat and ready and ready for today's session. And with, we would like to request everyone to keep silent and give our to the Lord Almighty and to our national flag. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here now. Thank you that you know each of us by name and have caused us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. As we surrender ourselves in adoration, we welcome you among us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice, open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom, open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance, and open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Lord, we thank you for the speakers and facilitators 
We pray that you will give them great inspiration as they share with us what you have placed on their heart. We pray that you will fill them with courage and give them your peace. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Ayan, partner. Good morning to you. Ayan. <laughs> Good tayo. morning, partner. Na-miss kita. Ayan. I miss you too. Nagkaroon tayo ng konting uh, power interruption. Pero ngayon, okay na. Pero hindi ibig sabihin yan, papipigil tayo sa paghahatid ng mga makabuluhang impormasyon at uh, panibagong matututuhan sa ating mga teachers. So, as I said, last April 10 and April 17, we have done well enough through our five days of fun-filled and productive self-paced activity. And it's all because we had emptied our cup during our training and let our proficient speakers fill it with new knowledge and ideas that will help us become resilient among or most especially during this trying time. So we hope that you can still bear with us today because your your active participation is very important in this activity. Tama ba ako, partner? Yes, partner. We, we need talaga yung alilang participation today. Yes, tama. Ikaw ba, partner, nakagawa ka na ng mga output natin doon sa ating link last uh, April 11 to 17? Siyempre naman, partner. Anong webinar Ayan. natin? Gumawa na agad ako ng output, o diba? Ayan. Very good ka, madam. Pero sabi nga ng ating uh, stay president, hindi naman, yan ay, hindi naman tawag dito, kailangan natapusin lahat. Kung ano yung kaya natin. Siyempre, kailangan din natin mag-rest, diba? And of course, and at this moment, it's just right to lend an uh, an ear to our Babsteya president, no other than Pastor Danilo Tibanal for his opening remarks and to give us some update about our association. So everyone, let's give him a big round of applause. Magandang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat, sa ating pong mga kaguruan dito po sa Bataan at sa Balanga. 
Uh, ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa naging mainit na suporta ng atin pong uh, mga kaguruan sa atin pong uh, international webinar po na ito. And immediately after po ng, aming, uh, ng atin pong webinar, mamaya pong hapon, kami po uh, sa executive board ay um, magmi-meeting para pag-usapan ang mga mahalagang bagay uh, tungkol dito sa ating naging uh, webinar and immediately after that, this week, most likely, mga Friday siguro, Thursday or, or Friday, uh, magpapatawag po tayo ng uh, general uh, board meeting uh, via Zoom para po ilahad naman ang mga detalye ng mga naging kaganapan po sa ating uh, sa ating Babstay uh, seminar para po alam ng uh, lahat kung ano po yung ano ano po yung updates ng atin pong uh, webinar and as far as the outputs are concerned sinabi na po kanina ni Sir Jerwin mulat mula ipinahayag naman po ng inyong lingkod na huwag natin pong masyadong stressin yung ating mga sarili uh, uh, siguro yung sa output po kung ano lang po yung kaya natin, eh, yun po yung gawin natin. Eh. Sabi, sabi ng isang uh, teacher sa, eh sir, paano po kung hindi kaya? Eh di, wala tayong magagawa. Ay, uh, I'm sure na natuto ka. I'm sure uh, marami kang uh, narinig, nalaman. Eh di, we will go as it is. Uh, i- ang hindi lang po natin masasagot pagdating sa output sa ngayon ay yung sa sa Microsoft kasi output based po talaga yung uh, sa atin pong uh, Microsoft mamaya. Pero uh, alam ko naman po uh, yung atin pong mga taga Microsoft ay uh, madali pong uh, kausa, ka, kausap, madali rin po silang pakiusapan para mas gumaan ang atin pong mga trabaho. Uh, sa mga susunod na oras at sa mga susunod na araw with regards to the output. But anyway, uh, again, maraming maraming uh, salamat po at uh, alam ko na mas uh, madadagdagan pa lahat ng ating kaalaman sa, sa maghapon po na ito na tayo ay uh, nakababad dito sa screen. Uh, Siyempre, inaasahan po natin na ang lahat ng ito ay magagamit po natin sa atin pong mga trabaho at mga function bilang mga teacher at uh, bilang mga teacher leaders na rin ng mga ng atin pong mga paaralan. Marami pong salamat sa lahat ng uh, nagpagod dito po sa sa atin pong uh, webinar lalong-lalo na po ang uh, ang ang atin pong uh, partner, ang Power at uh, ganun din po ang mga bumubuo po ng executive board at ilang mga committee na tinap po natin mula sa General Board. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at pagpalain po kayo ng ating Panginoon sa maghapon po na ito. God bless po. Yes, and oh, Sir Dan, thank you so much for that heartwarming message and of course for giving us in about Babstay, uh, particularly when it comes to this uh, concerns and partner, yung, mga, yung welfare ng ating teachers, yan po lagi ang pinabantayan ng Babstay. Uh. Recall the learning experiences we had during the first and second phase of this webinar. We presented some of our struggles, hardships, and uncertainties. But this is Remember that we live in a VUCA world. Where nothing is certain, so it's better to be, it's better to be persevering, resilient, and of course faithful to overcome such challenges. And speaking of challenges, partner, what could be more than getting yourself involved with a legal matter? So how's that? This we can and um, timely to teachers and deped employees like us. So what can you say about? 
Well, partner, one of the ways to ensure the welfare of us teachers is of course protecting us from anything or anyone na pwedeng magdulot ng harm sa atin, like in legal concerns, hindi ba partner? So teachers should be educated, guided, and be well informed on things that we need to say or act upon. Nagogovern kasi tayo ng batas, kaya dapat partner, lahat ng gagawin natin eh, na ayon at tama. So, paano tayo kikilos na sure tayo at safe tayo? Ano ba ang pwede natin gawin if nangyari sa atin ang mga uh, hindi natin inaasahang pangyayari? The right information can be our weapon to protect ourselves. Diba, partner? Yes, taman. Absolutely. Kaya naman ngayon, partner, excited na ako to meet our first speaker. Day. So, would you like to introduce him right now? Of course, partner. So, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our first speaker for this morning. I am sure uh, na-meet natin to dahil uh, nakasama natin sa last international seminar natin. Hindi ba, partner, nung tayo ay pwede pang mag-face-to-face. At talaga naman na marami tayong matututuhan pagdating sa mga legal concerns and legal matters. So, let me introduce him. He practices law both as a government lawyer and a legal practitioner. He manages the Legal Edge, a law firm that specializes in education law and administrative law. The firm publishes education law resources and provides lectures and training workshops on various topics that are relevant to administrators in the public and private schools. Kaya isa ako sa mga panang kanyang mga book. So he is frequently invited by public and private schools to lecture on education laws. Currently, partner, he is also the head of the legal in investigation section of the school's division office of Quezon City and concurrently the chief administrative officer, OIC, after he obtained his law degree at the University of the Cordilleras in Baguio City, he joined the DepEd and first served as legal office first at the regional office and later in the central office where he was legal the, or he was the legal consultant in the office of the secretary. He has taught law subjects in various universities, of course, here in the Philippines, and he is the president of the Department of Education National Employees Union in NCR and the Vice President of the Legal Officers and Attorneys of the Department of Education. So ladies and gentlemen, to talk about legal issues in the academe, let's all welcome our first speaker for today, no other than Attorney Wade Latawan. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for the very kind introduction. And uh, good morning to, uh, to all our uh, listeners and viewers in the uh, Division of uh, Bataan. Uh, magandang umaga po sa lahat ng kaguruan at lahat ng mga nakikinig. Um, salamat din po sa pagkumbida uh, sa akin na maging bahagi ng inyong forum na ito. I'd like to uh, give my respects um, foremost to our uh, school's division superintendent, my good friend, uh, uh, as ASDS uh, officer in charge, uh, Roland Fronda. Um, I hope he's on board right now. And of course, to our president, uh, Dan Banal of the Bapsteya, who has made um, everything possible. Um, I've uh, been invited to quite a number of for teacher forums. Uh, this has got to be one, one of the, if not the most aggressive and most participatory teachers organization in the Philippines dahil uh, uh, very constant at uh, very regular ang kanilang mga activities sa uh, hinggil sa pagpapalaganap sa mga uh, karapatan uh, ng mga kaguruan. So I congratulate the, again Dan Banal and uh, all the officers and the members of the executive board of the Bapsteya. Uh, of course, including my good friend Aurea Galabo. Uh, all of you uh, and the officers, I cannot mention all of you, but con congratulations to all of you. As I said, uh, the Bapsteya has, one of the, is, uh, has been one of the um, most consistent uh, teachers organization who has, uh, that has uh, uh, catered to the, the rights 
welfare and the interests of their teachers. Uh, I hope this continues because uh, it's very important for our teachers to be abreast, uh, not only with the, not only with their uh, responsibilities as teachers in delivering uh, um, basic quality education, but uh, likewise uh, to their uh, rights, uh, to their rights that are uh, um, sometimes um, neglected uh, because of the uh, preoccupation in their uh, in their teaching. So um, since um, this morning, uh, I've been, we've been given only one hour to discuss uh, the things that teachers uh, need to know when it comes to legal matters. The topic is legal issues in the DepEd. I'd like to encapsulate um, or synthesize all the uh, all the topics that uh, as uh, quickly and as possible as possible because uh, as you know the law is a very vast uh, uh, ish top topic and uh, one hour is uh, certainly not enough but uh, again we will um, we will try to uh, um, make it possible by synthesizing all these uh, legal issues in the department of education first of all in the department of education as mentioned uh, correctly by our host na meron po tayo mga uh, marami po tayo mga dapat malaman tungkol sa ating privileges and rights kailangan din ho natin malaman na tayo ay uh, we are governed as teachers by uh, rules dahil nga po tayo in the public schools we are considered as public officials and um, uh, i'd like to make everyone aware of this because uh, especially those who ha have transferred from the private schools can you hear me uh, i'd like to uh, uh, i'd like to um, make a sound check if uh, our host and our audience can hear can hear me i might not be very audible ma'am sir yes sir loud and clear attorney yes sir. thank you thank you ma'am sir so um as i was saying in the in the public schools we are governed by civil service laws many of our teachers um, probably still have the ha hangover of coming from the private schools and uh, i'd like to make it clear that the rules in the private schools are not very different but uh uh, they have their own set of rules. Uh, this is because in the government uh, services as public officers like uh, us in the public school system, we are uh, public officers and therefore we are governed by civil service uh, rules and regulations. Unlike, unlike in, the, um, in the private schools, in the private schools, uh, they are governed by the rules, of course, in the private schools and by contract. The meaning when you... Uh, when uh, you are a teacher and you apply in the private schools and you're employed in the private schools, your um, conduct as a teacher in the private schools is governed by the rules and regulations issued by the school and by the manual of regulations in the private schools. And of course, the contract that you entered into. <coughs> so, um, of course, the, the, the manner by which you conduct yourself as a teacher shall be governed not only by these rules, but also by the contract that you entered into. Uh, and speaking of such contract in the dep in the DepEd, when you enter, the, if you remember well, um, of course, our new teachers will remember that, that uh, when you enter the DepEd, uh, there was no contract. There, there is really no contract. The contract is implied. Uh, you are appointed but without a contract. Therefore, there's no reference. Of course, our ancient teachers who are maybe in, on board also may not remember this, but when you were appointed, probably in the 1970s, uh, the, if you can remember, there, there, there was also no contract that you entered into. But uh, uh, unlike in the private schools where the contract binds you, in the public schools, um, it is your being a public officer that binds you. So if you remember, when you take your oath as a teacher, uh, it is not only an oath that you will perform your functions, but also an oath that you will obey all the rules and regulations of the land. Uh, you, will, you will obey, if, if you remember right, and even if those who are new teachers, they, you, when you take your oath of office, uh, the oath of office specifically lays out your obligations. And you mentioned in your oath of office, yung nanumpa po kayo, which is a solemn oath, by the way, which should not be taken for granted because a, an oath is a, not only a promise, it is an affirmation of your duties that you understand it and you will abide by all the rules 
you will obey all the duly constituted authorities. And when we mean duly constituted authorities, we mean all our authorities in the DepEd, starting from your immediate supervisor or superior up to your principal, to your superintendent, director, and the secretary, and all the other officers uh, uh, who are um, on top of um, the uh, chain of command. So um, uh, have this having said, uh, each teacher must understand that uh, we do not um, work in a free-for-all um, environment. There are rules to follow, and uh, when once these rules, uh, once these rules are not followed, um, then there will be implications. And what are these implications? This is where the subject matter comes in right now. There, there are implications whereby a teacher may be held accountable or liable. Because in the DepEd, as in any other government office, when there is uh, rights and there are privileges, there are also there are also liabilities and accountabilities. And uh, as a public officer, we have to be accountable. Of course, in the Constitution, it specifically states that all public officers shall be accountable to the government, shall be accountable for our ac for our actions. Uh, we shall at all times be accountable to the people and we should serve the people. And that's why uh, when we uh, are public officers, I'd like to remind everyone that um, we cannot just uh, think of ourselves. Paano naman ako? Bakit everything? Sometimes the default there is when teachers uh, feel agreed. Uh, they, will always, uh, they will always think that uh, they are the ones who should, uh, who, who, who should be preferred or but you know uh, we have to understand but uh, apart from these rights and privileges la sabi nga ni sabi ng isang superhero nga for every great responsibility comes accountability also or so uh, for, uh, every great power and there there comes responsibility so our power as public officer or or the or the functions entrusted to us as public officers does not uh, does not uh, uh, involve only our rights but it also in, involves our liabilities so that's where our subject matter comes in this morning on what are these liabilities that we have to understand also uh, but before these liabilities of course because you may be wondering there are about 50 51 liabilities or 50 51 administrative offenses in the department of education more or less um, of course, this will arise from those which are written in the DepEd rules of procedure in the civil service as well as in special laws. What do I mean by special laws? Special laws are those uh, we, we probably hear, yung mga uh, Republic Acts, yung mga ganon. Uh, for example, the latest one is uh, 11313, Republic Act 100. Republic Act 11313. It's commonly referred to as the anti-bastos law. Uh, we, we, we will discuss that in passing later on. Uh, I'm just citing an example of a special law wherein teachers need to be aware of also in the classroom. This subject matter of uh, 11313 or the anti-bastos law or the Safer Places Act uh, is important for teachers, um, especially in terms of the subject matter of gender awareness uh, under the uh, under the general ter uh, under the general topic of the of the god or the gender and development and when it involves teachers teachers should also be aware because the first principle that i would like to mention to you and as you have probably heard oftentimes from your speakers and from elsewhere is that ignorance of the law excuses no one you've probably heard that oftentimes but actually the provision under the civil code is um, is ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. Sa makatuwid, ang ibig sabihin natin ito, ang uh, ating hindi pagkaalam o ang uh, are being ignorant to a law does not excuse us from complying with said law. It may be, it may be a little harsh, but uh, that is the law uh, which is adopted in our jurisdiction. Uh, hindi man natin alam itong batas dahil Tayo ay mga kaguruan o tayo hindi nakapag-aral o tayo ay simpleng mamamayan lamang. Ang ating batas ay batas. Kung, kung, kung kaya't um, uh, tayo ay kailangan may kaalaman kahit papano. And also, especially being teachers, to a certain extent, we have to be aware of these laws because they may, one way or the other, affect us directly or indirectly in the discharge of our functions. Hindi natin pwedeng 
um, maging depensa yung hindi ko na hindi hindi ko alam yung debt and order na ito uh, kung kaya hindi ko naman sinasadyang i-commit dahil uh, hindi ko alam ito hindi ko alam na meron pa lang debt and order na nagsasaad na uh, uh, mayroon pa lang ganitong rule na dapat sundin again uh, i'd like to go back to that uh, to that legal principle that ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith so um, before we proceed to the legal issues that I'd like to talk about this morning, because there's like uh, plenty of them, I'd like to talk about some principles that a teacher should know. Uh, uh, teachers probably, uh, oh, God forbid, will be confronted uh, sooner or later with a with a complaint, because you know, as public officers, as I said earlier, we are open to scrutiny. Uh, we cannot be onion skinned, so to speak. When we say onion skinned, yung masyado tayong sensitive. Meron nagreklamo na parent dyan laban sa atin, tas galit na galit na tayo, masisira na atin yung, masisira na ang ating uh, um, ratio, hindi na tayo nakakatulog. But you see, as public officers, we have to understand that we are always under the microscope. We are always under scrutiny. At, uh, at obligasyon natin yun, responsibility natin yun, dahil nga po tayo ay public officers, uh, dapat uh, maintindihan natin na tayo ay open to criticism. Ang criticism naman ay hindi naman masama. Uh, hindi naman ba, um, porque tayo ay criticize, eh, eh, tayo'y pwede nang magreklamo at uh, labag na ito sa ating karapatan. Hindi. As public officers, to a certain extent, nag-reduce o na nagbawas tayo ng tinatawag nating, tinatawag nating immunity o tinatawag nating uh, karapatan natin. Dahil nga po tayo, nung pumasok tayo sa gobyerno, maliban po sa ating pinanumpaan na tayo po ay magsisilbi sa publiko, we will be public servants, nung tayo ay nanumpa, tayo rin ang nagsasabi, tayo ay susunod at mag o tayo to the duly constituted authorities, lalong-lalo na po sa ating saligang batas at sa lahat po ng batas na, na umiiral. So, so, so ito po, uh, having said this, um, kailangan po kasi malaman natin to bago po natin kasi baka may 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 mag-react eh, eh bakit ang dami-dami naman tong rules na to eh hindi ko naman alam dapat ko ba tong sundin lahat and the answer is yes we have to we have to follow and we have to be conscious and aware aware of these uh, rules and regulations that affect teachers now one legal principle is the uh, imprescriptibility is uh, it's uh, you know some sometimes or most times law terms are very hard to understand na uh, not because they are complicated, but sometimes because they are very hard to pronounce. So the imprescriptibility, the root word being prescribed or prescription, uh, there is no prescription in administrative offenses. What does this mean? Um, criminal cases, of course, unlike administrative cases, in criminal cases, there is a prescription of action. Okay. Prescription meaning meron pong expiration, kung yun po yung ating naiintindihan na mas madali, uh, meron pong expiration. Halimbawa po, para sa mga serious offenses, kagaya po ng murder, kagaya po ng rape, kagaya po ng mga criminal offenses na ito. Pag ito uh, hindi mo hinabla, halimbawa na-rape ka nung, uh, of course I'm not pertaining to anyone, halimbawa po na-rape ka nung 1980, tapos uh, nung 1980 ka pa, tapos nung 2001, sabi mo, Dapat maghabla na ako laban sa principal ko kasi hindi naman niya ako tinuluyan, ni rape rape niya ako ng 1980. Oh, matagal na masyado para para ikay maghabla ng rape. Eh, alam mo naman conscious ka naman na nangyari 'yon. Uh, if you complain beyond a 20 year period for serious offenses, nagpre-prescribe ito. So kahit tayo may karapatan, ang karapatan natin ay maaring ma-waive. Waive all rights. I mean almost all rights can be waived. Ang karapatan natin pag hindi natin um, ipinaglaban o in-invoke ay maaring mawala sa atin. Kaya nga doon sa movie na ewan ko ay doon sa uh, uh, TV show na siguro inabutan na ng mga ating mga Jurassic na uh, mga kaibigan, mga teachers, eh yung kay Attorney Season, buhay pa naman yata yun. Sabi niya kung may, kung may katwiran, uh, ipaglaban, something like that. Because uh, of course, we, we know that... Uh, as I said, rights, uh, while they are available to us teacher, pag hindi natin ipinaglaban o hindi natin in-invoke, ito ay maaring ma-wave. Kaya nga, uh, ganito na lang ang pagla, pagtaguyod ng babsteya sa mga karapatan ng mga teachers. Dahil alam natin yung irony na uh, teachers have many rights, but the irony is the teachers themselves are the ones who 
well, most times do not know or are not aware of these rights kung kaya't sila ma madalas na na, na papahamak o dahil, hindi dahil sa gusto nila mapahamak kundi dahil kulang sila sa kaalaman tungkol sa mga ganitong mga bagay. So, talking about the imprescriptibility, uh, halimbawa, uh, sabi ko kanina, yung mga murder, it prescribes in 20 years mga serious offenses kung tawagin. Meron din ko tayo mga serious or light offenses. Halimbawa, may mga light offenses tayo na pag hindi mo, hindi mo inaksyonan sa loob ng isang taon, maaring ito ay mag-prescribe kagaya po ng mga uh, pag-iskandalo o uh, 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 napagsabihan ka na masama o you, you were... Uh, Defend, okay? Oral defamation, kung tawagin, okay? Na, na insulto ka, ininsulto ka sa publiko. Maraming nakarinig uh, na, na, na yurakan yung inyong pagkatao. For example, that's how they always say it. Um, pag ito hindi mo ipinaglaban at hindi mo, hindi ka naghabla sa loob ng isang taon, mawawala na yung karapatan mo. Ito yung tinatawag na prescription. Prescription of um, crimes or, or, or action. Ngayon, why, why am I mentioning it? Because in the DepEd, hindi nagpre-prescribe. Ang mga administratibong offense, offenses are imprescriptible. So they do not have any expiration as opposed to the criminal cases that have an expiration date. Sa DepEd, ang expiration ay kapag ikaw ay nag-retire o ikaw ay nawala na separate sa service. But while you are still in the service from the time of your appointment, mula nung ikay hinirang bilang, halimbawa, teacher one, hanggang sa ikay mag-retire o, hindi pa, o hang, hanggang hindi ka pa nagre-retire, ikaw ay saklaw ng rules ng DepEd at ikaw ay maging, pwedeng maging liable o pwedeng ungkatin ang mga naging offenses o maaring naging offenses mo noon noon pa hambang habang nakas nasa serbisyo ka why 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 you may be wondering why is it like that why is it in the that in ad criminal offenses my prescription bakit sa, de, sa uh, administrative offenses walang prescription well that is the nature of administrative offen offenses because the the principle behind that is while we are public officers we are we shall remain accountable to the people. Kaya nga sabi niya dun sa constitution public officers shall be accountable to the people at all times and that all there all times means that while you are in the service you may be held accountable now let me give you an example so that you may best understand this uh, um you assuming you committed an offense uh, in uh, when you were appointed in 2010 for example 2010 that's 11 years ago you're thinking bakit ngayon inungkat lang ito nirereklamo na naman ang aking uh, ang aking pa uh, affair noong 10 years ago and tagal-tagal na yun. As I said, uh, um, imprescript, uh, imprescriptible po ang administrative offenses. <coughs> so, hindi po ito nag-expire. Um, nag now, second, anonymous complaint. Mabanggit natin tungkol sa mga anonymous dahil madalas nagkakaroon ng mga complaint at uh, hindi natin kilala kung sino nagko-complaint sa atin. Madalas, uh, pinapadala lang sa, sa Malacanang, sa Office of the President, sa 888 Minsan pinapadala sa DepEd, hindi naman natin nang alam kung saan nang gagaling itong mga reklamo. Uh, itong teacher, pakiimbestigan itong teacher dahil itong teacher na ito ay may kinakasamang uh, isang uh, seaman na hindi hindi naman sila kasal. O, mga ganun, mga allegation. Now, can we be held liable? The question is, can we be held liable or accountable or answerable to these kinds of complaints kung ito naman ay anonymous? Uh, hindi naman natin kilala kung sino nagre-reklamo. The general rule here is no. Okay? Teachers have the right to be protected from anonymous complaints. Dahil ang isang anonymous complaint ay hindi valid na complaint. Para ito'y maging complaint o valid na complaint at para ito'y papasa sa scrutiny ng DepEd at para maging accountable ang isang teacher para sa isang reklamo, kinakailangan ito ay mayroon author. Uh, some, there needs to be someone behind the complaint, someone who will sign it. And kailangan panumpaan ang isang complaint. That's why all complaints, sabi nila, kailangan notarized. Of course, notarized is the loose term. Ano? Pero ang, ang, uh, ang technical term dito is it has to be under oath. Uh, hindi pwedeng uh, magreklamo ka lang, natatago ka lang, at hindi, hindi ka magpapakilala. Uh, hindi to valid. At dapat ang ginagawa ng DepEd dito, dinidismiss sapagkat sapagkat may karapatan ang bawat isa to be informed not only of the nature and cause of the accusation against him but he has to be informed who is complaining against me 
Now, uh, that is the general rule. I'd like to I'd like to emphasize that general rule. Ngayon pag pinag-uusapan natin ang batas, um may, kung merong general rule, there is always an exception to that general rule. Um uh, and mind you, uh, we have to be more aware of the exceptions kasi um we cannot always rely on the general rule. So, generally, as they say, Hindi pwedeng anonymous complaint. So if there's a complaint against you as a teacher, you have the right to resist it. In fact, you do not even have to answer it. Or if you will answer it, you do not even have to answer it um, with the merits of the case. So if there is a complaint, pinapasagot ka ng principal mo, oh, may reklamo dito na meron ka raw, uh, meron ka raw kinakasama na, na hindi mo naman daw asawa. Oh, kaya may reklamo dito na may utang ka. Uh, may utang ayaw mo raw bayaran at ikaw ay manggagancho manggagancho kang teacher uh, do not react right away the, the proper attitude of a teacher is not to to go berserk go berserk and go wild and you know that that is the usual reaction alam mo alam naman natin ganun yung usual reaction pag tayo na pagbibintangan lalong lalo na kung ito'y lalong lalo na kung ito'y totoo uh, tayo ay nag nag, nag nag re react agad reactive tayo well, what should a teacher do a teacher should be uh, prudent in her actions. Um, kasi minsan, uh, ay madalas, ma madalas eh, uh, dito tayo na papahamak dahil sa atin pagre-react pag o sa atin uh, pagko-comment, dito pa sila nakakakuha ngayon ng ebidensya laban sa atin. Sabi nga, it is better to be to it is better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubts. Kaya, uh, alam nyo po, ang pinakamagandang uh, weapon okay ang pinakamagandang weapon uh, laban sa mga ganitong akusasyon ay silence okay uh, especially if you know that you committed because you know ikaw lang nakakaalam you know in your heart kung ginawa mo ba hindi kung ikaw ay in your heart alam mo na ginawa mo it is best that you keep quiet because opening your mouth will not help you okay just be quiet because if you open your mouth Sabi nga nila, whatever you say can and will be used against you. Kaya nga, siguro naririnig nyo sa mga TV shows, mga, oh, you have the right to remain silent. Actually, that's the Miranda warning. The Miranda, that's why it's called a warning. When a police arrests you, the police has to give that warning. You have the right to remain silent. Now, it, it, also, it also applies in administrative cases, kahit sa mga kaso-kaso. Kaya kung ikaw ay inaakusahan sa DepEd, sa halimbawa sa paglabag, sa mga rules na uh, mapapasadahan natin later on, the best defense, if you have not spoken to someone that you really trust, like a lawyer or someone who will give you legal advice, like Danilo Banal or, or yun, officers of the Bapsteya, be quiet because it will not help you if you talk and you talk. You know, that is, the, that is one of the, especially for the new teachers, huh? that is the malady of the, of the teacher. Sometimes wala naman ebidensya laban sa kanya, pero dahil sa kanyang pagko-comment, if you Facebook pa niya, maglalagay pa siya ng mga my day niya na ganito, ay nako, uh, mga tao wala magawa. Wala naman talaga akong kinokolekta sa mga sudyante ko. Voluntary naman yun. O yan, on broadcast pa niya. Broadcast pa niya kung ano yung manner, kung paano siya, kung ano talaga yung ginagawa niya. But you see, what I'm trying to say here is good faith kasi sometimes it's not a defense. Pwede natin sabihin na tulaga naman yung good faith naman ako, you know. Going back to what I was saying, it's better for you teachers uh, because this will probably be an induction already to the new teachers who are on board. If you are accused of something and you know that you did it or whether you did it or you did not do it, there is no there is there is no good effect if you stop talk. Eh. Walang mabuting idudulot yung yung pagsasalita mo o pagko-comment mo and you even want to be, bring it to social media platform at doon ka pa mag rant at doon ka pa magsasabi na yung mga taong walang magawa dyan, hindi naman talaga, wala naman talaga akong uh, ginawa, tapos magko-comment ka pa ng iba-iba, uh, you might incriminate yourself. What do, we mean, what do we mean by incriminating oneself? Uh, maari natin sa dahil sa ating mga nabigkas o dahil sa mga nasabi natin o mga na-mention natin on social media, tayo ay maaring mapahamak. That is incriminating ourselves. Kaya nga, going back to that Miranda warning, again, you have the right to remain silent. That is a very basic right. And teachers should know that. 
Now, if you talk and talk, sinabihan ka na nga na you have the right to remain silent. Salita ka pa rin ng salita. You are waving your right. Ngayon, pag meron silang napulot dun sa mga pinagsasabi mo, pwede nilang gamitin laban sa iyo. Can you blame them? No, you cannot blame them. It's your fault. Salita ka kasi ng salita. When, in fact, or on the contrary, you should have remained quiet and let your lawyer be the one to help you figure out how to make your defense. So again, when you are charged with an administrative offense or criminal offense for that matter, huwag ka nang salita ng silita. Classical example is you're driving. For those of you who are driving, you're driving your motorcycle and then uh, you, you, well, you uh, figure into a collision and then the police comes and then you will tell the police, siya ang may kasalanan, hindi siya, hindi ikaw. Kasi ako ganito, galing ako sa school, anong pakialam, ng, anong pakialam pa ng police kung saan ka galing? It will not help. Remember this, the policeman is not the judge. Okay? The judge will, the, will be the one to say, if you have a liability or not, no liability. It is best for you to be quiet. Okay, so do not offer any testimony or do not offer any information or facts which is not material to the case. Okay, remember that you're arguing with another person in the streets will not be resolved there. If you want to resolve it amicably, then do so, but do not offer information because remember, it is not the policeman who will resolve your case. Kahit ano pang argumento mo ba dyan sa lansangan, hindi naman yan matatapos diyan. Now, this is, this is similar to the DepEd. Okay? When you're asked by your fellow teachers and your, your supervisors, and they are not the disciplining authority. The disciplining authority is the regional director. Okay? So if there is a complaint against you, avoid commenting, avoid telling other people, ganito kasi yung kaso ko, wala naman talaga yung kasalanan. Meron ba yung kasalanan? You are just trying to affirm. But these people who are affirming, or helping you or making you feel good are not the ones who, in, who are going to decide the case. So be quiet. Be quiet. Keep it to yourself. Okay? Because in the first place, these people who are commenting and, and asking you are not there really to caring about your welfare. They're just there to make sagap chismi so that they can also tell the other teachers. Well, alam nyo ba yung ating co-teacher? Nako, sabi niya hindi, hindi siya may kasalanan. Well, nako, sa tingin ko talagang May kasalanan talaga yan. Kasi tingnan mo naman, oh, halatang halata naman sa kanyang... You know, these people will not help you when they ask you about things. Uh, they, they were, they're not really there to help you. Buti kung pauutangan ka nila sa pagkuha mo ng abogado. Um, there, they, you can say that they are helping you. But if they're just asking to elicit information, they may make sure, uh, make sure that uh, they are really your friends. Because I am very sure the next morning after you tell them your side, uh, there will be hundreds of other versions from other teachers so again going back to the going back to the other um, uh, principles of law on anonymous complaints we were we're talking about anonymous complaints the general rule is anonymous complaints shall not be given due course ang ibig sabihin niyan pag may anonymous complaint say you need not answer it because it's an anonymous complaint however what is the exception the exception is anonymous complaints may be given due course Pwedeng patulan ng DepEd ang isang anonymous complaint kung ang complaint naman ay may lakip na ebidensya. For example, they send a complaint to the superintendent. They are complaining against you. Dahil halimbawa sa iyong uh, affair or secret affair with someone. Oh, at meron mga pictures doon. Okay? May video, may video pa na pinos, sinave sa USB is submit sa DepEd. Now, it's an anonymous complaint. Hindi mo alam. Sino ba nagko-complain laban sa pakialamero to, inggitero to, siguro dahil naiinggit sa akin, mas maganda ako. Uh, now, you say, oh, that is an anonymous complaint. I will not answer that. Do you have the right not to answer it? No, you have to answer it because you don't answer it. The anonymous complaint will be given due course if there is evidence. And I was giving you an example. What kind of, what kind of, what kind of evidence are we talking about? Evidence which will stand in, in, stand the scrutiny of an investigation. For example, pictures. Okay? Walang complainant. Hindi mo kilala kung sino yung complainant mo. Pero may mga pictures na inilakip doon sa complaint laban sa'yo. At yung complaint ay klarong-klarong ikaw yon na merang hawak na object. <laughs> 
minsan nga nag nag uh, nag uh, tataka ako sa mga teachers gagawa na nga ng mga ganitong kalokohan magpapapicture pa mag video pa ang sarili gumagawa na nga ng hindi maganda alam na ngang labag sa batas alam na ngang immoral ipipicture ibibideo pa you know the taking pictures and video will will not do you any good sabi ko nga sa mga siguro itong itong natutunan ng mga teachers sa sa DepEd eh. kaya binibideo lahat lahat ng ginagawa lahat na meron pa diyan lahat ng ginagawa pinopost sa Facebook kung malaman kung bakit kailangan i-post sa I-post nyo lahat kung maganda. Kung hindi maganda o alam mong illegal, huwag mong, huwag mong isi-save. Huwag kang, kasi mapap, maaaring mapahamak ka. Sabi ko nga, baka na ito yung natutunan ng mga teachers sa seminar, yung documentation. Kaya lahat, lahat, uh, pinupost, hmm, naki, nakipag-date, hmm, hindi matiis. Kailangan may picture, kailangan may video. Hmm, alam na nga na yung kadate niya, eh, hindi sa kanya. Hmm, meron nagmamayaring iba. Ngayon gusto niyang makisaw-saw o nagpicture pa, nagvideo pa. Hmm. Akala niya siguro para siguro sa documentation. O ito ngayon napahamak siya ngayon dahil sinend sa DepEd ang anonymous complaint, lakip ang picture at ng video ng kasama niya. Now, masasabi mo pa ngayon that I have the right to uh, the, against anonymous complaint hindi na dahil ang anonymous complaint na rule na hindi uh, hindi hindi pagbibigyan ang kahit anong anonymous complaint ay kung walang ebidensya. Pero kung may malinaw na ebidensya kahit anonymous complaint ito, pwede ito patulan at pwedeng paharapin ka sa DepEd kahit na walang complainan. Ang tanong mo, eh, sir, paano ako paharapin? Eh, sino nag-aakusa sa akin? Wala naman complainant dito. Hindi kinakailangan ng complainant sa administrative cases. Dahil sa administrative cases, dalawang uri. Maaring ordinary complaint na may complainant, maaring din complaint na DepEd mismo ang maghahabla sa'yo. So, halimbawa, may picture ka, nandun ka sa tupada, na boring ka, na boring ka dahil pandemic, pandemic dito, pandemic doon. Wala na akong, wala na akong entertainment. O, yan, yung mga lalaking teacher. Hmm, pumunta sa pumunta sa nightclub, mm, picture-picture, o oh, may kasamang mga, o, oh, tapos yon nagpicture-picturean, tapos yung isa, nakagalit niya, o, oh, ipinost, gumamit ng uh, fake account, ipinost sa uh, anonymous account, ipinost sa Facebook, na nandun ka sa nightclub, o kaya nandun, may tupada, o, oh, sumali siya, o, oh, may mga pusta-pusta, o, oh, tapos nag-iinuman, mm, hindi masamang uminom, ha? hindi masamang uminom, kahit, teacher kahit pa principal umiinom naman eh. Kanya nga lang pag nakikipag-inuman ka, eh wag mo nang picturean yung sarili mo nagiiinuman. Kung ito naman ay hindi social gathering, eh okay? kung nakikipagwalwalan ka. Because as we know, we are role models. We do not have to repeat that often time adage that teachers are role models. And imagine if all your you know social media all your students will be looking, ay ano ba naman yung teacher na yan? Lasing na lasing o yung laway niya tumutulo pa. Oh, naghahalo pa sa sipon niya. Imagine these students will... Is that an administrative offense? It is. Baka akala nyo hindi administrative offense yun. It is called conduct prejudicial to the best interest of the service. Okay? It, it may also be called simple misconduct because misconduct means that it is conduct or action which is unbecoming. Kaya tinawag na misconduct. Conduct that is unbecoming of a public officer. Now, Tama ba na makita ang isang teacher doon sa pasugalan, doon sa tupada, doon sa inuman, nagsusugal, may hawak pa, na, may, may pera sa harap, tapos nag-analyze nag, nag ng baraha. Eh, pag nakita ng mga sudyante ito, tama, tama bang uh, ehemplo yung ganun? Natural, hindi. So, whether, of course, it's a very light offense lang naman yun. Kanya nga lang, it's still an offense. Kaya teacher should be, should be also worry about about this. Okay, so speaking of anonymous complaints, um, hindi lahat ng reklamo laban sa teacher ay magiging ganap na administrative case. May mga teachers naman na iniririklamo na yung iniririklamo naman laban sa kanila ay walang kinalaman sa kanilang trabaho. Now, this is the last principle that I want to discuss with you. Ang teachers may karapatan na 
to be presumed innocent. Lahat naman, kahit hindi teachers. We, kanina, the right to remain silent. Ngayon, mayroon presumption. Mayroon right of uh, against self-incrimination. Ito naman, yung right to be presumed innocent. Now, kung mayroon tayong reklamo, may reklamo laban sa atin, we are presumed innocent. Yeah, kahit pa maraming ebidensya. We are presumed innocent. So, because we are presumed uh, innocent, hindi naman naapektuhan yung ating karapatan. Kasi akala natin pagka na, napailan na tayo ng complaint, eh, eh, may stigma na laban sa atin, marami na tayong hindi pwedeng gawin. That's not true. Kahit ikaw yung may complaint laban sa'yo, pwede ka pa rin ma-promote. Habang wala pang hatol sa'yo, pwede kang sumali sa ranking, pwede kang mag-leave, pwede kang humingi ng, uh, pwede kang mag-travel, pwede kang mangutang, pwede kang makakuha ng clearance habang wala kang, wala pang hatol laban sa iyo. So, hindi naman dahil kinasuhan ka, kasi anyone can file a case against anyone, but it does not mean that you are already guilty. Now, if you are not yet guilty, it, it also follows that because you are presumed innocent, you should be able to enjoy all your rights while you are not yet guilty. Kasi nga, presumed innocent ka. Yun ang ibig sabihin niya at yun yung essence niya. Ngayon, dahil hindi ka pa naman guilty, you should not be barred or you should not be prevented from joining a ranking. Kasi nga, oh, retirable ka na, teacher 1 ka pa rin. Gusto mo naman mag-teacher 2. Oh, sabi nila, hindi pwede yan kasi may kaso. That's not true. Okay? Oh. So, uh, this is one of the uh, things that we also have to understand when it comes to cases like this. Kasi sabi nila, pag, pag may reklamo, pag may reklamo laban sa'yo, marami, parang sasabihin nila na wala ka ng karapatan. So, let's go to the things that, at the legal issues the prevailing, yung mga maiinit na issues ngayon sa DepEd na dapat malaman ng isang teacher. Okay, uh, during this pandemic time, since 2020, if you remember well, when the... Uh, when the uh, pandemic broke out and then, you know, the work and classes were suspended, uh, lahat, ng, uh, lahat ng ating ginagawa ay uh, natigil. O, o marami sa ating ginagawa ay natigil. Hindi na tayo nakapasok, hindi na tayo pinapapasok, at hindi na rin natin nagagawa yung mga gusto natin gawin, uh, yung mga mamasyal papunta dito. So anyway, when because of that, become, because of that, we were forced to stay at home, and most of us were encouraged to stay at home. Kaya ano ba naman ang gagawin mo kung sa bahay lang, kundi mag Facebook, <coughs> mag uh, Twitter, o ano mga ginagawa ninyo. Now, why is this something that I need to discuss today? Because uh, most of the uh, complaints now in the DepEd during these trying times, during this pandemic, kagaya nga nang sabi ni ating Presidente si Dan Banal, uh, during this pandemic, uh, kailangan din uh, natin alam kung ano ba yung mga dapat uh, karapatan ng bawat teacher. Now, during this pandemic, ang uh, tumataas na rate ng kaso ay hindi na doon sa mga pangkaraniwang kaso noong wala pang pandemic. Kasi noong wala pang pandemic, alam mo naman yung mga pangkaraniwang kaso, mga misconduct, negligence, mga, mga dishonesty, tungkol sa mga Form 48, tungkol sa mga medical, mga ganyan. Eh ngayon, hindi na yun, uh, hindi na yun yung prevailing kasi nga, hindi naman tayo napasok, hindi naman regular yung ating pagpasok, may mga work arrangement tayo. So makatawid, uh, most of our time is devoted at home. So, ano ba yung mga nagiging kaso ngayon ng mga teachers kahit nasa bahay? Imagine, nasa bahay ka na nga, nakakasuhan ka pa. Um, one of these crimes is the cyber libel o yung libel pero using social media platform kaya nagiging cyber or uh, based on cyberspace or yung mga internet-based cyberspace or cyber libel. Kaya um, ang, ang message ko lang dito yung na dapat tayo maging maingat sa ating pinupost because our posts on social media, either be they be uh, Facebook or whatever platform in, uh, in on social media is um, will give rise can give rise to accountability or liability of teachers. Um, you see, uh, hindi hindi dahil we are hiding under our uh, behind our cell phone, not in public. We're thinking that what we post is oh, it's just just social media. You know, so, uh, social media is not a game okay do not do not think that it's purely entertainment and a game even if it's social media there are accountabilities or liabilities that may arise especially from a public school teacher 
So this is the one of the issues that I'd like to discuss because uh, we have to understand that in in um, there there are two balancing rights here. Eh? Uh, teachers have the right as any other in, in, as any other citizen. Teachers have the freedom of expression. But uh, freedom of expression is not absolute. You know, the freedom of expression is uh, loosely defined as the right to express your opinion, the right to express your thoughts, the right to state what you think is right or what you think is wrong or anything that you want to say or do is part and parcel of the freedom of expression that you enjoy. But as I said, this freedom of expression is not without exception because it is not absolute. It's not absolute in the sense that if you, in the exercise of your freedom of expression, will violate the rights of another also enjoying that kind of freedom expression. Because you have to remember, you are not the only one who has freedom expression. Everyone has freedom of expression. But as they say, your rights end where the rights of another begins. Okay, so wag mong, do not go over. Do not go over that. You have rights, but do not go over the rights of other people also. You enjoy your rights within that bubble. Bubble, that's our favorite term now. Uh, within that bubble. So, wag kang lalabas dun sa bubble na yan and, and, and go into the bubble of another. You enjoy your rights within your bubble. Okay? What do I mean by that? If you want to express yourself, you express yourself. But without hurting the feelings of others or without violating the rights of others. Many, I'm, I'm saying this because many complaints are now based on posts, Facebook posts. Now, are there or is there any liability incurred by a teacher who makes so many posts? Many principal school heads and even school of uh, deputy officials are agitated sometimes by the post of teachers kasi siguro wala nang magawa yung teacher. <laughs> Nagpo-post na lang kung ano-ano. Ah, um, yung post ng isa, siguro may day niya. Hi! Sabi niya, walang magawa, nakakatamad, masarap matulog. And, and yet she has not submitted yung mga <laughs> required uh, requirements dun sa paggawa ng mga <laughs> modules. So, ibig sabihin, can that be used against the teacher? Well, technically, it cannot. Because she's just expressing her opinion. Uh, minsan kasi itong mga principals din natin, masyado naman mga trigger happy. I'm sorry to say this sa marami namang kaibigan principal. Pero sometimes everything they want, it parang gusto na lang nila. Wala silang nakikita o nakocomment. They have to understand that teachers have the right also. May karapatan din naman kayong mapagod. So, yung pagkocomment nyo ba na, ay, nako, walang magawa. Pero hindi ka pa nag-submit ng requirement mo. Ay, nako, walang magawa. Masarap, matulog. Sabi ng principal, tingnan mo ito, attorney, ho. Wala daw magawa, pero hindi siya nag-submit. Hindi siya nag-attend nung dapat siya mag-attend. Pinap Tapos ngayon, magpo-post siya na nakakatamad. Walang magawa. Ang sarap matulog. Is that, uh, does that give rise to any liability on the part of the teacher as claimed by the principal? No. No, of course it does not. As I said, the teacher has the freedom of expression as long as long as she or he does not violate the rights of others. And how does one violate the rights of others? If the statement made is against the right of another, and what crime would that be? Cyber libel. Now, cyber libel is libel or libelous statement, defamatory statement, if that's what you understand, libelous statement against another person using social media. And that is what makes it libelous. So, ask yourself, is the statement that I will be making libelous? If the answer is yes, do not post it. Okay? If you are maligning the reputation or good name of another, it might be libelous. Okay? How do you know if it's libelous? Of course, you can... Uh, it, it, I do not have the time to explain to you all the elements of libel, but but uh, it is libel if you malign the reputation of another. Now, if you want to understand further about libel, you just Google it. What is libel? And it will come out. Libel is committed by, or like this, like this. Or if you want to know more in our context, kasi uh, baka you're reading a, a reference that's uh, 
very technical and very legal. Sometimes it's you're even reading it. It's not Philippine law na pala. It's na pala, Portugal na pala yung batas na yon Pero libel pa rin kasi libel exists in all jurisdictions naman in all countries. You will be wary of the resources also that you read. So if you want to be more specific, you ask the Babsteya of legal references because uh, most, um, I have books that have been uh, that are in the custody of one and then of, of Babstay, yeah. So you just ask uh, the Babstay officers and they will tell you what uh, what books are available, including administrative offenses. Doon yung makikita lahat ng mga offenses sa DepEd. Para if you have studies or you have uh, uh, you have refer need references when it comes to, uh, for example, rules in the DepEd. Let me show you, for example, this, this is one example of my book, okay? The revised rules of the DepEd on administrative investigations. I have the updated copies of administrative rules and uh, offenses. It's with the Babsteya. Babsteya is the is the authorized distributor of all my books in the entire province of Bataan. So again, nagplag lang ako pasensya na kayo. But but again, if you want to know more of these rules, you just um, you, uh, get a copy of my book. It's very reasonable and it will help you in understanding the rules in the Department of Education para hindi kayo mapahamak dahil hindi nyo lang alam. Kasi kagaya na sabi ko kanina, ignorance of the law does not excuse anyone. So let's proceed. Ano ba yung mga Facebook posts na to na libelous na sinasabi natin? Okay, and ano yung rules dito? Now, I'd like to make this very brief and I'd like you to listen carefully because the liability may vary. Now, under libel, under our libel laws, okay, uh, under our libel laws, of course, the case in point here is the case decided by the Supreme Court. Alam mo tayo, tayo kaming, mga, sorry, kaming mga abogado, when we talk about uh, ano ba yung tama at hindi, we always refer to decisions of the Supreme Court. Dahil uh, yung decision ng Korte Suprema is a law. Okay? Whether it is right or wrong, in your opinion, kung ano yung naging decision ng Korte Suprema, yun yung batas. Okay? Kaya halimbawa, yung decision ng Supreme Court na ibinabasura yung same-sex marriage. Oh. That is a law. Yeah, hindi kailangan na mag... Basta kung anong decision ng Supreme Court, isa yan sa mga bahagi ng ating batas. Halimbawa, yung decision ng Supreme Court na valid yung K-12. That is a law. Yung decision ng Korte Suprema na hindi pinapayagan yung... hindi pinapayagan yung uh, same-sex marriage at saka yung divorce sa Pilipinas... Yeah, that is also a law. So, in this case, we are citing the case of Dicini, Dicini versus the court, uh, Dicini versus the Secretary of Justice, rather. Um, of course, I just cited that so that you will understand that I am basing my lecture not only on what I think, but all, also on the decisions of the Supreme Court. Now, ang sabi ng, ng, ng Korte Suprema dun sa kaso ni Dicini versus Secretary of Justice, which was decided uh, way back in 2014, medyo bago para sa aming mga abogado, pag mga ganyan, bago pa yan. Um, it was decided in 2014 where it discussed the liability of those posting. Now, of course, it involves teachers also kasi kaya nga dito sa DepEd, gusto kong malaman ng bawat teacher na hindi naman lahat ng pinupost natin eh, freedom of expression yan. Okay. Alimbawa, sabi mo, hi, nako, yung school na ito, Wala nang ginawa kung hindi magbigay ng trabaho sa mga teacher. Mahirap na lang ang ginagawa. Is that an administrative offense? Is that not part of your freedom of expression? No. So there, 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 there is where the debate comes in. Na libelous ba yun? Now, you have two, two things to think of. Number one, kahit hindi libelous, if it constitutes an administrative offense. Kasi sa yung cyber libel, criminal offense yan. Meron din tayong administrative offense. Meron ka rin civil accountability. Kaya nga meron tayong threefold responsibility of public officer. Dapat alam natin na meron tayong criminal liability, civil liability, administrative liability. Hmm. Ano yung civil? O yung mga interpersonal. Okay, may hapang makulang yung oras para i-discuss ko lahat. Interpersonal. You know, may, which give rise which give rise to, which can give rise to damages. Damages. Civil. Hindi man ikaw ang gumawa, hindi naman. Pero, uh, it involves uh, your civil obligations. Hindi ka nag... Uh, file ng salen. Criminal offense yun. Pag hindi ka nag-file ng salen. Hindi ka nagbayad ng tax, criminal offense din yun. 
nakakagat yung aso mo. Hindi naman ikaw ang nangagat sa kapitbahay mo. Pero bakit ikaw yung kinakasuhan? Dahil ikaw yung may-ari ng aso. Yung anak mo, yung anak mo nilagyan ng lason yung iniinom ng teacher. Mm. May kasalanan mo yung anak mo? Wala dahil minor di edad yung anak mo. Ikaw may kasalanan ka ba? Wala. Walang kriminal kasi hindi naman ikaw naglagay. Anak mo naman ang naglagay. Maliba na lang mo yung anak mo. Yung anak mo naglagay ng lason. Hmm. Sarap na sarap yung teacher. Ay, yung teacher na matay. Ikaw ba naglagay ng lason? Hindi. So you have no criminal offense. But you have a civil obligation kasi anak mo yun, minor. Under your care yun. Kahit na na-school nangyari, under your care. Now, can the family of the teacher sue you as a parent? Yes. Yon, yon ang tinatawag na civil obligation. It, you can be liable for damages for the actions of your children, of your ward, or of, of those under your custody or under your household. That is a civil obligation. Ngayon, administratibo relates to work. Remember, I mentioned earlier, hindi ka pwede makasuhan administratibo kung hindi ito bahagi ng trabaho mo. Kagaya ng utang, natataka na ako sa debit pati utang ginagawang issue. Okay? Kung may utang ka, problema mo yun. Hindi yun problema ng DepEd. Kaya sa ating mga principals, dapat alam nila yon. Kung ikaw may utang ka sa kapitbahay mo, yung kapitbahay mo pumunta sa DepEd, nagreklamo, ano man dapat gawin? Dapat ibasura. Bakit? Abe, wala namang kinalaman yung DepEd dun sa utang mo. Nung nangutang ka, hindi ka naman alam ng DepEd yun. Personal, civil obligation mo. Ngayon, kung gusto kanyang kasuhan, kasuhan ka niya sa court, pero hindi niya dapat dalhin sa DepEd because it's not an administrative offense. Okay? Kahit walang kinalaman sa work mo. Going back sa libel, kasi naubos na yung oras natin, let me tell you na mag-ingat po kayo sa pagpo-post dahil pwede kayong ma... Halimbawa, if it's only an expression, kagaya na sabi ko kanina, ay nako, sa DepEd, wala nang ginawa kung hindi pahirap sa teacher. That's your opinion. You may not be criminally liable. You may not be criminal we're criminally liable. Huwag mo lang, huwag ka lang magbanggit ng something that will damage the reputation of another. But you can be held administratively if nag-comment ka bilang teacher, bilang bahagi ng institution, nag-comment ka ng isang makakasira sa institution. It is conduct prejudicial to the best interest of the service. Halimbawa ang sinabi mo, alam mo itong mga modules na to, walang mga silbi ito. Dapat antayin na lang natin kasi kaya itong mga binibigay ng mga principal na trabaho, pahirap. Dapat kaming teacher kung pandemic. Hindi na kami lumalabas ng bahay kasi hindi naman kami immune dyan sa COVID na yan. Dapat hindi na kami pinapalapas. Ano nang dapat module-module. As a teacher, that is your opinion. But remember that you are a part of the DepEd. And if you mention something that is against the policy of the DepEd and you are not supporting. You're a teacher. You want to comment like this, you go out, you step out. If you are not a teacher, you're a citizen, okay lang yun. Hindi ka makakasuan kasi hindi ka naman ang teacher ng DepEd. Pero teacher ka ng DepEd. Kinokontra mo yung, yung policy ng DepEd na kung saan ikaw dapat ang sumusuporta. You can be liable for conduct prejudicial to the best interest of the service. It's punishable by six months suspension lang naman. Now, apart from that, uh, let's let's go to the others. One 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 thing that in the case of the senior and secretary of justice, one thing that it mentions is the rights of teachers on. Uh, yung halimbawa, meron kang sinabi. Yung co-teacher ko pinangalanan mo pa ha. Yung uh, co-teacher ko kabit ng principal. Kanan pang minention mo. Tapos, nabasa ngayon ng mga co-teacher mo. Nagsabi nila, oo, oh, oh, tama, totoo yan. Meron naman isa. Pinos, shinare niya pa. Hindi, niya lang, hindi lang siya nag-comment. Shinare niya pa yung picture ng co-teacher niyo. Pinost niyo yung picture niya. Na kausap lang naman yung principal. Tapos, nag-post na nga yung co-teacher namin. Kabit yung principal. Tapos pinost yung picture ni teacher na yun na tinutukoy nila. Nakausap lang naman si principal at na, nakangiti silang dalawa. So syempre, lahat naging interesado at may iba nag-share pa. Sinare pa, tapos may mga nag-comment doon sa na-sinare na 
Oi totoo yan, kaya pala. May mga ganun pa mga comment. Kaya pala. Oh, may nag-comment na naman, mga walang hiya. Hmm. Kung ano-ano mga comment na. At nag naging viral na, naging viral. Hmm. Ngayon, question. Sino ngayon ang may liability doon sa post na yun? Kasi walang magawa nga. Walang magawa yung teacher. Sa bahay lang, boring. Nag-post tuloy ng green. Who has the liability uh, in, in, in the, and, and what kind of liability does the teacher have? Or who among those teachers have liability? Is it the teacher who, or everyone, halimbawa lahat ng nag-comment, tama yan. Hmm. Malangdi talaga yan. Malangdi yung teacher na yan. Oh. Is, is she, yung mga nag-comment, are they also liable? How many teachers will be, will be held liable? Lahat ba nang nag-comment? O lahat lang nang nag-comment ng patungkol doon sa teacher na yun? Halimbawa, yung iba thumbs up lang naman. Or halimbawa, yung iba smiley. O laughing emoji. Can they also be held liable? Well, in this case where the Supreme Court decided, I'd like to tell you, sana kung face-to-face -face ito, marami sana tayong example. Sana. But, uh, sabi ng Supreme Court dito sa kasong ito, yun lamang nag-post ng original. Okay? <laughs> yun, yun lang original na nag-post. Siya lang ang mahahabla ng cyber libel under Republic Act 10175 better known as the Cyber Crime Prevention Act, which considers as libelous any statement that are libelous under the revised penal code, but on social media. Now, under in, in this case decided by the Supreme Court, sabi, ang sinabi dun sa libel, who are held liable for libel? Okay? The author, the editor, or the proprietor. Sa mga tuwid, sabi dito sa kasong ito, kung ikaw yung author, meaning the original post, the one who posted original, you will be held liable for cyber libel. But what about those who commented? Minsan yung comment, mas matindi pa. Ay, totoo yan. Tama. Napakalandi talaga yan. Ay, di ba? Mas masama pa yun. Mas mala, napakalandi talaga yan. That was a, that's a comment. That's a comment. Can he or she be held liable for that comment? Apparently, in the case of the Sini versus Secretary of Justice, no. No. But of course, you have to be careful. Now, if you ask me, as a lawyer, I will tell you, you can comment as much as you comment. Totoo yan, hain ako naka, hindi na ako nagtataka. Will you be held liable? No. But I suggest that when you make comments like that, you make sure that also that your comments are not in themselves libelous. That is my opinion. Of course, they, you can always cite the case in this, in, in, this, in this case decided by the Supreme Court na hindi naman ako liable dyan kasi hindi naman ako yung author sabi dun sa kaso diniscribe pa ni Attorney Wade. But uh, let me tell you that just to be safe, your comments, even if they are not covered by the cybercrime law, must in themselves not be libelous. Okay? Mag-comment ka, iwasan mo naman yung mga libelous statement. Kasi si pag sinabi mo rin dyan, Hay nako, totoo yan. Alam ko yan. Kabit talaga yan ng principal. Oh, that is also a libel statement. And while it is only a comment and you are not the original who posted it and you think you're safe, you probably are. But I'm just saying, you try to avoid. You try to avoid these kinds of comments which may be libelous also because they may file a complaint against you. While it may be dismissed, pero you just avoid yung mga libelous. So you okay ka na dun sa mga comment comment na yon. So uh, that 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 is a that is only an excerpt from the case of you can you can search this the Dicini versus Secretary of Justice decided by the Supreme Court in 2014, whereby uh, the SC or the Supreme Court decided that only the one who posted the original post shall be held liable for cyber libel. Again, I'd like to um, remind all teachers that. When it is not necessary, do not use, expose yourselves unnecessarily. If it is not necessary to post, do not post. If you want to, if you are in doubt, and you do not post about other people, you post about yourself. Yan, you will not be held liable. Kahit napuriin mo yung sarili mo. Hang ganda-ganda po yan, kahit araw-araw po yan post Ipuriin mo yung sarili mo, kahit na alam mong hindi totoo. That's okay, because that's not libelous. Okay? Uh, just... Uh, Avoid posting about other people and about other institutions because this may give rise to a crime called cyber 
uh, libel. Okay. Um, so because we're, uh, oh my God, it's 9.07. Um, what are the other issues in the DepEd? Uh, let, let me just go through the other issues very briefly. Uh, I mentioned I, I've been mentioning since uh, this early on of the on part of the lecture you immorality. Uh, let's be aware of immorality because uh, while it is a private crime, you're saying oh, private life ko naman yan. Bakit pinapakialam ng DepEd? Walang private life pag ikaw ay government employee. Okay, even if it is a private life, even if you do not bring it to school, if it affects your status, your image as a teacher, you may be held. Liable. So yung personal na buhay nyo, huwag niyong isipin na hindi sa klaw ng departamento. Kung ito naman ay may ebidensya, kaya huwag kayong maglalabas ng kahit anong ebidensya. Okay? Hindi naman masamang umibig, pero dahil kayo ay government employees, kailangan uh, kung alam nyo hindi legal, knowledge kasi is important. Kaya nga yung mga ibang teachers natin, halimbawa, nakipagrelasyon, hindi alam na may asawa pala yung karelasyon na buntis. It is a defense. It is used always as a defense na I did not know. No, kasi knowledge, kasi in, in, in committing an offense, in committing a crime, knowledge is important. Because if you did not know, you were not aware of it, you do not have a criminal mind. You understand? I hope you understand this. What is being punished is the propensity, the criminal intent, the criminal mind. So how can you have intent and how can you have a criminal mind when during that time you just had a relationship and you were falling madly in love, yung uot, yung hindi ka na gumagamit ng utak, puro na lang puso, kaya nga lagi kang napapahamak kasi puso na lang ang ginagamit mo. You did not know, or at least, well, they say you ought to have known, pero dahil nga sa sobrang, sobrang... Um, na, na in love ka sa co-teacher mo, tago na lang natin sa pangalan JR, yan kasi may teacher sa bataan na guwapo, JR daw ang pangalan. So na, na humaling ka dito sa co-teacher mo itong si JR. At uh, hindi mo na tinanong nung inaya kang makipag-date, hindi mo na tinanong kung taga saan siya, anong pangalan ng nanay niya, kung anong trabaho niya. Sumama ka agad kasi na humaling ka, sobrang guwapo. O ngayon, nagkaroon kayo ng relasyon, nabuntis ka. Unang-unang date niyo pa lang, nabuntis ka na ni JR. Do you have any liability? Well, they can charge you for immorality pag nalaman ng asawa ni JR at kinasuhan ka, then you can probably be charged with immorality. But the defense there is, did you know? Did you know that JR was... Well, you ought to have known kasi grabe naman, teacher ka. Pero gagawin sabi ko, it is a defense if you did not know. But you make sure that you can prove that you did not know. Because if they can prove that you knew, <laughs> because there's a difference. What, what matters is not what you know, but what you can prove. Even if you are alleging that, I did not know, I did not know that JR is married already. Hindi ko alam, nalaman ko na lang nung kinasuhan ako. You can say that. That's a good defense. But if the wife of JR can prove that you knew, <laughs> alam mo, alam mo, dahil, dahil, oh, ano ba, oh, meron silang proof na alam mo dahil, uh, dahil uh, may magsasabing witness halimbawa na hindi kilala niya na yan si JR. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, kaibigan nga nila, uh, high school friend nga nila, yung asawa ni JR. Kaya alam niya yan, imposible hindi niya alam. And if it is credible, if the evidence against you is credible, that there is evidence to show that you knew o alam mo, then you can be held liable for immorality. Okay, so there are many kinds of immorality, by the way. Maybe we can discuss this in some other forum. There's immorality in the workplace, immorality by its very nature. I'll uh, just give short examples, immorality. By, I, I'm saying this because these are the legal issues that are common in the DepEd, apart far from the crimes committed on Facebook. New mga offenses committed by teachers yung involving immor immorality, and there are three types of immorality as described by Civil Service Commission. Immorality in the workplace, which affects your 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 performance. Oh, halimbawa, yan, mag, um, you're committing immoral acts in the school. Immorality by its very nature. Halimbawa, you you you're coming up with a relationship which is incest, incestuous. Um, you're having a relationship with your halimbawa with your uh, bienan. Oh, ganyan, oh, 
course that is nakakasuka naman ano mayroon kang relasyon sa biyenan mo but anyway uh, sexual relationship i mean uh, and if halimbawa that happens that is immorality by its very nature because you are not allowed to have any relationship within the fourth degree of civil or uh, uh, of civil consanguinity or affinity and your mother is in law is your relative is your relative to the second degree by affinity so you cannot have any relationship between your with, with your relatives so those are uh, incestuous relationship hindi rin pwede magkaroon ng mga uh, relation sa mga bata because that is also forbidden uh, now there there's the third kind of uh, of immorality which is uh, uh, immorality through forbidden relationships you uh, you're you're married and you have a relation with someone else who is married you're married you have a relationship with someone who is not married but uh, because you're married then it becomes an a forbidden relationship um question legal issue uh, is a girl to girl relationship a forbidden relationship well not really there is no decision yet on that uh, so if you have a boy to boy relationship there's no as long as you because marriage naman is not allowed between same sex um that is not immoral unless of course um unless of course uh, there's no uh, crime punishing that unless of course against there's evidence to show that you are uh you you have entered into a very scandalous relationship with the same sex uh, with the same sex okay so uh, another another uh, let's just talk about one one more legal issue uh, involving especially new teachers yung pirating many teachers have come it has come to the attention of the dep ed that many teachers have transferred from the private school to the public school now, question, is there any liability for the pub, private school teacher who transferred to the DepEd and was appointed in the DepEd without finishing her contract in the private school? Uh, yan yung isang legal issue ngayon sa DepEd na dapat natin um, i-address. -i 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 Dahil nga, sabi ng mga abogado ng mga private schools, dapat kasuhan itong mga teachers na ito kasi meron silang existing contract with the private schools. Tapos, nakita nila sa DepEd, siyempre, doble ang sweldo, mataas ang sweldo. Um, eh, dapat naman talaga mas mataas ang sweldo ng public school. Ano? Eh, alam nga naman, pri private school, eh, walang, may mga aircon, mga gandang uniform sa DepEd, walang aircon, mahirap nagturo, tapos hindi napipili mga sudyante, puro mga, hindi ko na i-describe kung anong klase sudyante. Okay? Pero mahirap talaga magturo. Sa tal dapat talaga mas mataas ang sweldo. Pero ang issue dito, kung bakit, bakit nga lumilipan? O, siyempre, dahil mataas ang sweldo. Ang, ang, ang issue dito, meron bang kasalanan yung mga, mga teachers na lumipat na hindi pa tapos yung kanilang kontrata sa private school? The answer is yes, meron. Kaya mag-ingat ko yung mga, kung dito may liability kayo. Hindi naman criminal to ha, kung hindi civil. Hindi ko naman nilalang yung civil, pero hindi ko sinasabing kayo yung mabibilang ko. Hindi kayo mabibilang ko. Um... Unless there's a penal clause, but obviously there cannot be a penal clause with that. Ano? But uh, wala namang penal clause yan, so hindi kayo mabibilanggo. Um, pwede ba kayong matanggal sa DepEd? Halimbawa, na-appoint ka na sa DepEd, tapos kinasuhan ka ng private school? Hindi. That is the, that is the um, um, how do I say it, misconception. Ang misconception o yung maling akala, eh, kung ikaw ay na-appoint na sa DepEd at kinasuhan ka ng private school kung saan ka nang galing, pwede kang matanggal bilang teacher sa public school. Hindi yan totoo. Okay? Marami na po tayong na-depensa na teacher na ganyan na kinasuhan ng private school at pinapatanggal. Hindi hindi pwedeng matanggal. Hindi matatanggal. Yung iba kasi, pinapatanggal. O yung sa DepEd naman, palibasa yung teacher, walang lawyer. Hmm, pinors na mag-resign yung teacher o malis sa DepEd dahil nga meron pala siyang liability. Hindi yan pwede. Ang DepEd walang kinalaman. Unang-una ganito ha, kahit yung mga yung mga pag pag-hire ng mga teachers na ganyan. Kung kahit may kontrata yung teacher doon sa private school, wala akong pakialam ang DepEd diyan. Okay? Walang pakialam. Um as long as we are as long as the DepEd is not itself pirating ha, yung ini-induce kasi iba 'yon, may 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 damages 'yon pagka ini-induce natin na mag-apply ka na lang sa DepEd. Kasi Marami ka naman experience, 3 years ka ng teacher dyan. Oh, tapos 8,000 lang ang sinasahod mo. Mag-apply ka na lang sa DepEd. Hmm, kahit wala kang ginagawa, sinesweldohan ka. 
kahit hindi ka pumapasok, sinisweldohan ka. Hmm. Kahit natamad-tamad ka, sinisweldohan ka pa rin. <laughs> Alimba. Alimbawa, ganun yung iniindus. Alimbawa ng DepEd, yung may eh, relative ka sa DepEd na iniindus ka na po. <laughs> Tron Mansfer. Nag ikaw naman, syempre gusto mo malaking sweldo para kakabili ka na mas magandang cellphone para mas marami kang i-post. Uh, sabi mo, o oh, lumipat ka. Ang tanong ngayon is, will you incur liability? Yes, but civil liability. And when we mean civil liability, pwede kang kasuhan for damages because of the breach of contract. You understand that your relationship, as I mentioned in the very start of this uh, talk, your relationship with your private school teacher is contractual. Contractual because it is governed by the contract that you entered into with the private school. So if it says in the contract until 2022, you will be a teacher. So you have to serve this school until 2022. That's our contract. And as Alibawa, though, that's one of the terms in the contract. In 2021, you applied in the public schools. Nakuha ka sa final interview, you were appointed. So obviously, you had to leave the private school. Nagpaalam ka, ayaw kong payagan. Wala naman sila magagawa. So nag-assume ka ng duties mo sa public school, sa Limay National High School. O ngayon, Inahabol ka ngayon ng private school. Marami tayong ganito ngayon, kaya sa sabi legal issues ang pinag-uusapan natin ng mga common legal issues. Do you have li liability? Yeah, probably civil. Let them file a case against you for damages in the courts. Pero kung i-force kang mag-resign, i-force ka ng principal mo, ay, meron ka palang liability, tatawag ka sa division office, uh, i-cancel namin yung appointment mo o hindi namin ipoprocess yung appointment mo kasi meron ka palang kontrata, pwede kang magreklamo. Kagaya ng sabi ko, walang kinalaman ang DepEd sa kontrata mo sa private school. Kananagutan mo yun, harapin mo yun sa korte kung kasuhan ka nila for damages. Pero sa DepEd, hindi ka pwedeng tanggalin on that basis alone. Because while we respect the obligations and contracts, we have nothing to do with that. Ang importante, hindi DepEd ang nanghikayat sa'yo para mag-apply sa public schools. Pero pag malaman, halimbawa, ng DepEd na ikaw ay may existing contract pa, the DepEd should remind teachers na meron kayong obligasyon. Pero hindi namin kayo pwedeng pigilin kung kayo'y nag-apply. Again, um, again uh, it's your civil liability. Pero hindi naman ito, this will not give rise or will result to your being dismissed from the public service. So um, I, I've already uh, consumed enough time. I started uh, at exactly 8.20. I'm ending at 8.20. Thank you very much for the host uh, of this uh, uh, short talk. And uh, of course, to the Bobstea, thank you very much for other, for, uh, for uh, future, uh, for your future. I, I hope to see you soon in some future uh, uh, discussion on legal issues affecting teachers, uh, where we, can, we will be talking about other issues on um, negligence, misconduct, dishonesty, uh, appointment, ranking, and all uh, uh, such other issues that may be relevant to your teaching. So again, um, as usual, thank you very much uh, to the to the board members of the Bapsteya, uh, led by their indefatigable president, uh, Dan Banal. Thank you very much for all the teachers in Bataan who have uh, been patiently watching and listening uh, for all questions that you may have, you can, um, uh, and which have not been answered because I don't think there's any time for open forum, you can um, send me your queries uh, and uh, we will find time to answer all your queries. Uh, you just identify yourself, which school you are from, uh, so that we will, I will also have reference in answering your queries. Uh, for, other, for other matters that you want to learn on when it comes to legal matters, again, uh, you can refer to the educational education law books that are in the custody of the Babstaya. For more inquiries on this, you can uh, keep in touch with the officers of the Babstaya. Again, good morning to everyone, and thank you for our beautiful and handsome hosts for today. Uh, and may you have uh, a wonderful day ahead of you. Thank you very much, uh, sir and madam. All right, yes. madam. Ayan, so maraming maraming salamat. Attorney Wade. Ayan, ma'am partner. Um, 
marami tayong mga questions dito from our teachers. At for anyway, is it okay na maglaan po tayo ng konting oras to answer these questions? Namili lang po kami ng ilan sa mga importante at um, I think na kailangan ma- masagot ng mga questions and queries from our teachers. Ayan. Okay lang po kayo at least mga uh, two questions from uh, one of our participants. I, I guess nawala na si attorney. <laughs> Ayan, yes, attorney. Ko, sabi niya nga, meron na siyang 20 minutes na yes. na naibigay. Ano doon sa talagang oh, kung meron po tayong mga questions on legal matters at may iba pa tayong gusto. So, partner, napaka-clear nung discussion niya kanina, di ba? Yung mga relevant uh, natin ngayon na talaga yung pinaka-current talaga na nangyayari, siniscuss ni at So, kung meron daw po tayong mga concerns, ayan, pwede po tayo ayan. Na, uh, message. Nandiyan pa rin pala si Atorny. Hi, Atorny. Hello po. Welcome back, Atorny. Ayan. So, <laughs> Sorry. Ato, hindi okay lang po ba na mag-rate? Mga dalawang tanong lang po. Mm, sure, sure. Any any question? Kahit, kahit Ayan, yung... partner ma. <laughs> Ayan, partner ma. Una na ako ha. Kasi alam ko naman na wala tayong masyadong oras. So, uh, itanong nga natin yung dapat nating itanong kay attorney nang masagot na. Okay, attorney, yung first question is from a teacher. Sabi niya dito... Uh, What if ang teacher inabuli naman ng isang individual na sa abroad? Directly state ang names na parang personal na tinitira. May right ba si teacher na mag-demand kung ang, na, kung ang naninira sa kanya at nagpo-post sa Facebook or any social media account ay nasa abroad? Paano po yung gagawin doon? Maganda, maganda. Very good yun. Uh, unang-una, Uh, meron, ang, ang sagot doon ay meron karapatan magreklamo itong si teacher laban doon sa tao na sa abroad um, uh, at ang reklamo niya ay uh, pwede niya rin i-post doon sa, sa Facebook uh, bilang reklamo. Ang problema dito dahil uh, yung taong yun is outside the jurisdiction of the Philippines hindi maaabot ng ating batas yung taong nasa ibang bansa maliban na lang kung ito ay um, Uh, OFW na Pilipino pa rin na nagtatrabaho doon, maaring managot siyang kapag siya'y bumalik na sa Pilipinas. Maari din siyang ma, ma, uh, ga, uh, panagutin. Uh, kung alimbawa meron siyang mga masasamang sinabi na labag sa ating mga batas at labag sa karapatan ng teacher na yon. Pero in the meantime na nasa abroad siya, hindi na uh, hindi maaabot siya ng batas. So pagbalik niya, tsaka, kung ngayon kung permanent resident siya at hindi na siya babalik sa Pilipinas, ayun ang problema, hindi mo na siya maaabot. Kaya kung ano man yung mga comments niya doon, siguro pwede mo na lang siyang labanan ng contra comments din o kontrareklamo sa Facebook. Pero kung mananagot siya, mahirap po yung gawin. Ang gawin mo na lang, i-ignore mo na lang o i-block mo na lang. O uh, kung hindi mo naman siya ma-block dahil sinisiraan ka sa social media, uh, i-ignore mo na lang. Anyway, uh, yung mga sinasabi niya naman na, uh, well, does not define you. Uh, sinasagot ko lang yung tanong mo kung anong pwede mong gawin. Pwede mo rin siyang i-reklamo kung babalik siya sa Pilipinas. Ngayon, uh, kung hindi naman, Uh, alamin mo rin yung background niya kung saan siya nagtatrabaho sa, kung sa ibang bansa dahil pwede mo rin siyang ireklamo doon sa kanyang employer o pwede mo rin siyang ireklamo doon sa mga kung saan siya nagtatrabaho abroad. Kung hindi naman, uh, malabo, malabo na ireklamo mo siya dahil kagaya ng sabi ko, hindi siya saklaw ng batas natin kung siya ay nasa ibang bansa. Yun po yung sagot doon, sir. Okay, maraming maraming salamat. I hope nasagot po yung uh, tanong ng isa nating concerned teacher. Ayan, ma'am partner, how about you? Yes, partner, meron mo ang isa po sa ating mga participants. Siyempre, attorney, usually po kasi tayo mga teachers po ang uh, re-reklamo, ano po, nag-handle po tayo ng mga cases na, ayun, against our teachers. May misconduct naman po na ginagawa yung parents or students as, as teachers. Ano daw po yung rights na pwede naman nilang magamit or pwede namin, kami naman po yung ginagawa ng misconduct. That's a good question. Um, ngayon, dahil uh, hindi naman sila public officer, hindi naman sila kawanin ng gobyerno, hindi natin sila pwedeng filean sa DepEd. Uh, 
sapagkat wala naman jurisdiction ang DepEd sa kanila to hold them accountable. Wala naman tayong arm para pwedeng gamitin laban sa kanila. But what we can do is if they have abridged our rights or they have violated our rights, either criminally or civilly, civilly, alimbawa binubuli tayo on Facebook, may mga sinasabi silang mga malisyoso, hindi naman tama, we can file a complaint against them in the courts of law. Pwede tayong mag-file, depende na sa uri ng kaso, pwede na tayong mag-file ng criminal complaint naman laban sa kanila uh, sa prosecutor's office. Gagawa lang tayo ng affidavit complaint o salaysay at inilalahad natin kung ano yung mga statements na sinabi laban sa atin na labag sa ating karapatan at pwede natin itong i-file sa office ng piskalya o prosecutor's office sa munisipyo o sa kapitolyo or kung saan uh, kung saan nakaka doon saan nakakasakop doon sa saan nangyari ngayon sa mga cases kasi ng cyber libel uh, wide yan hindi kagaya ng paggalimbawa na uh, sinuntok ka magfa-file ka doon sa piskalya halimbawa ng kung saan ka saan nangyari ito pero dahil cyber libel uh, very wide ang coverage kung saan mo halimbawa narinig o nakita yung mga uh, damaging statements laban sa Uh, kung cyber libel, pwede mong i-file kahit saan, kahit sa kapitolyo ng, ng balanga, ng, ng bataan, pwede mong i-file doon sa prosecutor's office. So ito po yung sagot doon sa inyong query kung ang teacher naman ang binubuli o ang teacher naman ang uh, uh, nagawan ng isang administrative offense, uh, walang misconduct on the part of the, of the parent or of the student. Uh, kung yung student pwede siyang ma -ma madisiplina uh, sa school. Dahil nga alam natin ang estudyante ay minor de edad, free from criminal liability, ang below 15 years old, pero pwede pa rin siya madisiplina sa school, pwede siya masuspinde, uh, pwede siya mabigyan ng warning, o uh, depende sa gravity ng kanyang ginawa. Kung ito naman ay magulang o community member, at ito naman ay labag sa ating karapatan o it, it constitutes a criminal offense yung kanyang ginawa, kagaya ng sabi ko, pwede tayong gumawa ng salaysay uh, o complaint affidavit, salaysay ng pagrereklamo, at ito ay ipipila o ipafile sa prosecutor's office uh, ng nasasakupan niyang lokalidad. Ma'am. Yes, ayan. Thank you. And, and, and we hope po na sagot po ni attorney yung query po ng isa sa ating mga part. Ayan po. Sir, meron, meron pa ba pahabol. tayong mga ibang yes. questions? Meron pa habol ng isang question. Attorney, uh, from isa ulit sa ating mga participant, isang teacher, may ground po ba or... Uh, Pwede po bang ireklamo ang isang school head na sinasabihan ng ibang teachers at mga utility sa loob ng school na wag pong kausapin ang mga teachers na hindi niya kapanalik. Kumbaga, may discrimination po inside the school. Yan. Oh. Actually, yung mga ganitong offense, uh, offenses, halimbawa yung mga parang uh, inialienate ka, yun ang ginagawa siguro. No? That's the proper word. Uh, you're being alienated. Yes. Parang hindi naman dahil mukha kang alien. Pero parang alienated, alienated in the sense na parang dinidiscriminate against, hindi ka dapat kausapin, uh, hindi ka hindi ka kaanib, kung ano man yung kanyang grupo, hindi ka kaanib doon. Uh, pwede siyang uh, ireklamo. Uh, ireklamo, perhaps for a, a, it's a grievable complaint kung ganun yung mga actuations, mga interpersonal. Pwedeng siyang ireklamo sa grievance committee doon sa division office. Uh, gagawa ka lang ng sulat doon sa kanyang actions. Uh, mainam na meron din kahit isa man ng teacher na magsuporta sa inyong statement. Pero kung ikaw talaga nag-iisa, uh, ikaw na lang, wala ka ng kakampi. Pwede ka pa rin naman magreklamo sa superintendent, sa office ng superintendent para ilahad kung ano yung mga ginagawa ng principal laban sa'yo at maaring didinggin ito doon sa grievance committee. Uh, kung bakit uh, para ma mapatawag yung principal para ma-explain bakit ito yung nagiging uh, asta niya o kanyang nagiging action laban sa isang teacher na kanyang ini-alienate o kanyang dinidiscriminate. Ayun po, sa diretsyo na po sa office ng superintendent ang reklamo ito, sir. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat, sir. May pahabol pa. About dun sa cyber libel, um, what if wala namang pangalan na binanggit, sir? Yung libelous sa... Uh, post niya, walang name na binanggit or specific na name ng teacher or kahit sino pa man. Still possible ba na makapagtampa siya ng case? It's still possible. It's still possible. Alam niyo, ang element of course is identity. Ang number one ang element kasi dyan, you have to identify the person. Uh, sabi ko nga, that is the general rule. Pero sabi ko rin kanina, there is always an exception. 
uh, even if the person is not specifically identified, if the, the words used are sufficient to engender a belief kung sino yung tinutukoy o klaro sa mga words kung sino yung tinutukoy. Halimbawa, ang sinabi, yung merong relasyon, yung dalawang host doon sa doon sa uh, Bapsteya Seminar noong uh, <laughs> April 24. Halimbawa, o oh, ba hindi naman kayo pinangalanan na dalawa na host. Pero sino pa ba yung host? Tukoy naman. Ngayon, kailangan lang maging klaro kahit hindi pangalanan o kaya sabihin na uh, meron sinabing masama laban sa pinakamataas na opisyal ng DepEd Bataan. Eh sino pa bang pinakamataas? Iisa lang naman ang pinakamataas ng opisyal. O kaya kung ang, 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 ang ibig sabihin ko lang dito, kung ang tinutukoy na tao ay klaro naman doon sa kanyang sinasabi o sa kanyang description, then libel is still or the, the filing of a cyber libel complaint is still possible kahit hindi specify o pinapangalanan. So balit kung kung uh, ang uh, ang complaint naman on the other hand eh hindi klaro, hindi specific, hindi rin klaro at wala rin uh, kumbaga wala rin tayong ebidensya para matukoy kung sino talaga yung kanyang sinasabi o kanyang dinidescribe, then cyber libel will not be possible. Pero to answer your question, yes, it's still possible kahit hindi klaro yung pangalan kung sa kanyang words we can infer, we can deduce kung sino yung kanyang tinutukoy, uh, then it's still possible na pwede siyang mahablak for cyber libel. Sir. All right. Maraming maraming salamat, sir. I know meron ka pa pong uh, webinar na atin. Ayan. I hope lahat po ng mga queries natin, save po natin para sa mga susunod na webinars or seminars ay masagot po ng ating paboritong attorney ng mga bataan, si Attorney Wade Latawan. Yes. Ayan. Yes. Siyempre, sabi nga ni Attorney, pwede rin po natin siyang i-message. Sabi lang po po tayong school or uh, division para ma-press niya po yung ating mga concerns. Kasi sobrang dami nga naman, ano, hindi kaya, yes. hindi ng one hour para masagot lahat or matapos lahat ng mga legal concerns. Ayan. With that, so, sir, at any way, maraming maraming salamat po. I know meron ka pa pong appointment na pupuntahan yeah. right with this webinar. <laughs> yeah, maraming yes. salamat sa time. Oh. Partners, hindi natin Sa hindi sa'yo. Baka date ka sa hindi sa'yo. <laughs> Wala. <laughs> hindi mag... <laughs> hindi mag... <laughs> ayan, Lalo na kung ayan. taken na si ano... Taken na ba si Sir JR? Parang hindi pa naman yata. Ano? Oh, wala pa. Wala pa ako nababalitaan. <laughs> Wala pa nababalitaan. Ayan. So pwede na. Reto-reto. Sir JR yes, ng Bataan. Yes. Ayun, ma'am, napakasarap makinig kay Attorney Wade sa dami-dami ng ating uh, pwedeng matutuhan. I hope next time eh, may mas mahaba pa yung ating time together with Attorney to discuss some of the legal issues na harap ng mga teachers natin. Yes, partner. So tuloy-tuloy pa rin po tayo Ayan. after po ng napaka-comprehensive na discussion kanina bago partner na topic na talagang on uh, for the welfare pa rin ng paguro. Yes, madam. Yes, partner. Napakamili nitong topic na i-discuss natin na susunod, no? Together with another professional speaker no, na kinuha ng, ng Bapsteya. I know this, uh, this topic is very relevant nowadays, lalo na sa dami-dami ng iniisip ng mga teachers at ng mga estudyante. Okay, we know that mental health is an essential part of overall health. And when a child or youth is mentally healthy, they are more equipped to learn and reach their full potential. The same is true with our beloved teachers. In this regard, but on Public School Teachers and Employees Association is committed to serve you with experts who will provide us with the information and resources we need to support our mental health, especially at times we may be struggling emotionally. Tama ba ko, partner? Yes, partner. We are very blessed this morning to have with us a registered psychometrician and family therapist talk about 
mental health awareness in the 21st century teacher. Introduce her now. She is yeah. a graduate of Bachelor of Science major in at Mondrian Aura College and currently completing her degree in Master of Arts in Technology at Angeles University Foundation. She worked at Preda Foundation 10 years as resident psychologist who deals with family problems, children in conflict with the law, child abuse cases, and human. She is also a licensed family therapist and a member of Society of Family Therapies. At present, she works as guidance counselor at New Kabalan Senior High School. Dear teachers, let us give the second speaker for today, the director of Power Incorporated, other than Miss Mary Eresa C. Benson. Let's give her. Hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning, po, sa lahat po ng teachers ng Bataan, sa lahat ng Hi po, po ng. Uh, eh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, po. Hindi ko kasi kayo na nasino kasi naka ano na sa aking PowerPoint. But then, good morning, po, sa ating dalawang host. Okay, sa ating magaling na host at kanina po nakikinig ako sa ating speaker si Attorney Wade, napakagaling niya no? at ang dami ko rin pong natutunan sa kanya so thank you so much Attorney uh, sa lahat po ng uh, the officers ng BP Steya, good morning po sa inyo at sa lahat po ng mga teachers and employees of uh, Division of Bataan okay. at the same time uh, I also want to greet na yung Tala Orani, uh, Tala Elementary School. Good morning po sa mga teachers dyan kung meron mang naka, uh, nanunood ngayon kasi graduate po ako ng Tala Elementary School and nung first year ko dun ako sa Holy Rosary Parochial Institute. Kaya napakadires po ng, Orani, ng uh, bataan, especially Orani sa akin. So let's proceed now to our topic, uh, the Mental Health Awareness Seminar. Napaka-relevant siya ngayon, napaka-timely at napaka Kung sabi ko nga kanina kay Sir Wax, uh, uh, from the legal uh, topic, medyo mag-align siya, siya. At marami kasi mga teachers din ngayon uh, talagang dealing with this. Hindi lang po mga teachers, kundi lahat naman tayo, no? Not even the non-teaching professions and other government employees, even our students, ay nasa ganitong sitwasyon, no? kailangan din ng mental health awareness training. And we are so lucky in, uh, as part of, as a member of BP Steya, kasi meron tayong ganitong mga seminars para maging aware tayo ano na ba ang nangyayari sa atin uh, mentally, psych uh, physically, and socially. So in this topic, Kung natatandaan po ninyo, meron po tayo sa Google Drive natin na sinagutan ng mga iba't ibang mga tables. Number one, yung uh, personal action plan. Sinagutan po natin yon At meron din po tayong uh, league table of stress. Sana nasagutan natin yun. No? Kasi napakaganda po nung uh, activity na yon Mamaya papalawakan ko pa po siya at i-discuss ko po sa inyo yon para mas maintindihan po natin yung result na, na, na nakuha natin doon sa League Table of Stress. Pero wala po akong ipopost dito, wala po akong ginamit na teachers or mga responses po ninyo doon sa Google Drive kasi masyado po siyang private, masyado siyang personal. Uh, doon po sa ginawa ninyo, my dear co-teachers, uh, mahalaga rin po na pwede niyo po siyang hindi ilagay din sa Google Drive. Pwede po natin siyang sagutan in our own self kasi... Uh, personal matter po siya, lalo na yung mga personal action plan and the big table of uh, stress. Pwede po natin hindi ilagay sa Google Drive. Pa ang mahalaga lang po doon, kaya ako po siya nilagay doon, is for you para makita po ninyo nasa ang level na po ba kayo ngayon at this point in time of your life. No? Nasa ang level na po ba tayo ng ating mental health. So, to proceed with our topic, no, Mental Health Awareness Seminar, first, we need to define what is mental health. So according to the World Health Organization, this is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productive, productively and fruitfully, and is able to contribute to his or her community. When we talk about mental health, pumapasok po dito yung ating psychosocial development. 
yung ating social uh, social well-being, mental health being, and even sometimes our physical health being. Madalas natin, at this point of pandemic, ang madalas nating nakikita, napaka very easy nating makikita is our physical health and our health per se. Kung tayo ay inuubo, may sipon, may sore throat, madali kasi natin yung nakikita kasi uh, ano siya eh, physical self siya. But then, itong mental health natin, napakahalaga rin siya na ma-identify natin at makita rin natin, ma-realize din natin sa sarili natin na sa ang level na po ba tayo ng ating mental health. Uh, madalas, nagagamot natin agad kapag may lagnat tayo. Iinom lang tayo ng paracetamol. Uh, after a minutes, after an hour, okay na tayo. But in, met- in mental health, no, there are a lot of things that we need to consider and we need to um, check muna sa ating sarili. Kaya, my dear co-teachers, my dear uh, sa mga teachers po natin na nakikinig ngayon, even employees, no, non-teaching professions, napakahalaga na mating, matandaan natin, no, ma ma-check natin na saan na ba tayo? Ano na ba ang mental health level natin? Okay? So, uh, isa rin dun sa nakalagay sa ating table is the mental health continuum. Dito pinapakita kung asaan na ba ang level ng mental, mental well-being and mental illness. So, nilagay ko doon yung mental illness kasi uh, isa yan sa mga number one, diagnosis when it comes to mental health. Pag ikaw ay nasa state of anxiety or depressions, nasa anong level ka na ba? Kung ikaw ay sobra nang nasa distress situations, no? kasi kapag stress tayo, we have two kinds of stress, the eustress and distress. Pag eustress, medyo okay pa yan. No? Stress tayo sa work, uh, kailangan ipasa agad yung mga kailangan ipasa, that is okay. Pero kapag nasa distress situation ka na, uh, you feel anxiety, meron ka nang nararamdaman na kakaiba sa sarili mo, no? not only physically, pero uh, mentally parang feeling mo, drain na drain ka na, hindi ka na makapag-isip, hindi mo na masagot yung mga questions ng mga estudyante mo sa module. Hirap na hirap ka nang isulat yung lesson one sa module na ito. Kasi tayo mga teachers, alam naman natin yan, tayo ang gumagawa ng modules most of the times. Na hindi naman kasi lahat ng modules ay na ipuprovide sa atin na ating uh, department. Talagang tayo ang gagawa ng ating mga modules. Minsan, although there are modules, pero late na siyang dumarating. Kaya ano yung gagawin natin, tayo ang gumagawa niyan. So if you are in the distress situations of your life, hirap na tayo makapag-focus on that. So, in this mental health continuum, pinapakita lamang, lamang dito kung nasa ang level na ba tayo. Uh, in our, uh, dra- sa Google Drive natin, nilagay ko siya para self, ano to, uh, self-answered uh, activity. So, kayo mismo ang mag-check sa sarili ninyo, nasa ang level na ba kayo sa tingin ninyo? Are you on the maximum mental well-being or the min- minimum mental well well-being. If you are on the right side, tama ba? Or right side, no? Medyo okay yan. A person with no mental illness diagnosis and positive well-being. And a person with no mental illness diagnosis and poor mental well-being. Yung nasa taas na right side, okay pa yan, no? Ibig sabihin, there's no mental, uh, there is, wala ka pa sa maximum level ng mental illness. Pero if you are on the left side na, of your left corner na, ito na yung nangangailangan ng ating uh, mental health care na tinatawag. Um, in Bataan, uh, meron tayong isang center, which is a government-owned, yung uh, Maribelas Mental Health Hospital. I, 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 alam ko uh, government-owned siya, so pwede tayong, uh, kapag may mga problem sa yung ganito, pwede tayong magpa- uh, out, uh, outreach, uh, kung meron pa ba sila ngayon, no? hindi ko lang alam kasi at this point in time ng, ng pandemic, no? kung nag-cater pa ba sila ng mga outreach. Pero nung hindi kasi pandemic, face during the face-to-face situation pa, so meron sila mga outreach program na pwede ka doon magpa-check up Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, iyon. So, mahalaga. Kaya nga, napakaganda nga ng, ng mental health awareness topic na to kasi talaga magkakaroon tayo ng self-realization sa ating sarili. 
So if you think if you are on this left side level na of ourselves, so talagang uh, ito na yung magsisik tayo ng uh, mental health care tinatawag. So meron mga questions ako nilagay doon. Marami po ang sumagot sa questions na to and thank you for that. Pero wala po akong ilalagay dito na sample answer na no? kasi ito po ay personal natin. So ito po yung mga questions. Number one, choose a point on the continuum you believe reflects your own mental health now. So tingnan natin doon sa continuum na pinakita ko nasa ang level ka na ba ngayon? Nasa maximum ka ba? Or minimum level? Sa right side or left side? no? And then number two, think back to a time when you felt particularly distressed or anxious. So, self-reflection to. Titingnan natin na sa ang part ba ng buhay natin or meron bang part no, sa buhay natin na na-distress tayo or we felt anxiety. This may have been due to a life event. Like for example, bereavement. Ngayong panahon ng pandemic, napakaraming mga kababayan natin, even our teachers, are in this point in time, bereavement. Work stress, sobra to. No? Kasi sabi nga kanina ni attorney, nasa bahay ka na nga lang, no? pero nagtatrabaho ka pa. Yes, it's true, nasa bahay po tayo, nagtatrabaho tayo. Pero mas nakakarami po, mas marami po ang trabaho natin ngayon compare sa face-to-face. -face. Hindi lang hindi ka lang gagawa ng module, hindi ka lang magsasag, uh, mag-check ng mga module output ng mga estudyante. Actually, hindi mo pa nga nasa, natatapos, checkan yung output na yun. Meron pa na bagong output na namang darating. No? At marami pa ang mga uh, work-related matters na kailangan. Yung other matters na tinatawag, mas marami pa yun kesa sa mga job-related natin. Di ba? As a teachers, alam natin yan. Financial difficulties, are we in this level now? No? Lalo na marami tayong mga kababayan ngayon ang nawalan ng trabaho. And we are so lucky in the Department of Education kasi meron pa rin tayong trabaho at sumasahod pa rin tayo. No? Every 20 or 50, kung depende sa schedule ng monthly, meron pa rin tayong sahod. And which point of the continuum reflects your mental health at the point in your life? So sa tingin ninyo, no, nasaan na ba tayong point ng continuum doon? Kaya we need to think back, reflections ang tinakailangan natin sa number two para masagutan natin yan, the self-reflections. We can do partial reflections or holistic reflections of our life. Pag sinabi natin partial reflections, tingnan natin bits by bits, ano na ba ang nangyari sa buhay ko on my previous life? Pwede natin tingnan nyo, nung March 2020 na nag-declare ng pandemic at to the present situations, ano ba ang nangyayari sa buhay ko? Are, are, am I in the situation na kailangan ko na ba ng mental health care? Or am I in the situation na okay ako at uh, nasa new idea, uh, I am uh, tag dito, niyayakap ko yung, yung pagbabago na meron ngayon sa Department of Education. No? Tingnan natin po yun. And then number three, now, think about a time when you felt very well or settled. Again, this may have been due to life events or life stage where on the continuum do you consider you would have been at that time. So, titingnan mo naman sa number three, yung mga positivity, yung positive na nangyari sa buhay mo. At this point in time, as a teachers, marami pa rin naman tayong mga positive events na nangyari. Number one dyan, sabi ko nga kanina, we still na may trabaho pa rin tayo. Hindi pa rin tayo nasa level na walang trabaho na kagaya ng karamihan sa ating mga kababayan. Meron pa rin tayong nakakain and we are still healthy. The mere fact na nanonood tayo ngayon sa ating uh, webinar and wala tayo sa hospital or sa isang quarantine area is uh, is a good thing for all of us. No? And then number four, what do the answers to the above questions tell you about the changing nature of mental health and well-being throughout a person's life? So, Eh, ano lang natin, isa-summarize lang natin yung answers natin sa 1 to 3. So, marami pong sumagot dyan, no? and thank you so much sa lahat ng mga teachers na sumagot dyan. Nabasa ko po yun, and of course, sa mga hindi pa po sumasagot, pwede naman pong sagutin ninyo to, pero ka, pwede rin hindi na ninyo ilagay sa Google Drive, kasi this is, oh, this is uh, again, uh, a personal matter to all of us. No? So, Aside from mental health, we need to understand also what is mental illness. Ito yung kanina ko pa binabanggit. No? This is used to describe the most severe cases of mental disorders or men more severe cases of depressive illness, psychotic disorder, and severe cases of an anorexia or BOSA, for example. May, uh, sa mga kapa natin gulo na nandito ngayon nakikinig, actually before pandemic pa, ang dami ng mga suicidal uh, suicidal news 
akong nababasa regarding teachers. Uh, kung natatandaan po natin way back 2018, 2019, may mga may mga na, nababasa tayo sa Facebook na si teacher nagpakamatay. May teacher na nagpakamatay. No? At tapos inaalay nila to sa dami ng paperwork ni teacher at kung ano-ano pa. Or sometimes may mga estudyante tayo na nasa ganitong level of uh, situations on their life na yun nasa suicidal tendency. Bakit kaya sila umaabot sa mga ganun, no? Uh, I'm not saying that they have mental disorders, but then, if you are on the uh, maximum level na ng inyong, iyong anxiety or depression or distress situations, maaari na kasi tayong mapunta sa ganitong level. Uh, napakahalaga na maintindihan natin na ang isang tao, yung mental health natin, isang tip lang yan, no? meron lang diyang matrigger na emotions natin, pwede na tayo magkaroon ng mental disorder. Isa lang, isang bagay lang sa buhay natin na makapagpatrigger sa ating emotions ng sobra-sobra, pwede na po tayong, maka, uh, mar, pwede na tayong magkaroon ng mental disorder. Lagi po nating tatandaan yan. And mental illness nowadays, no, is hindi, uh, marami nag-advocate po niyan na magkaroon tayo ng awareness about it. Even yung mga sabi nga dito, severe cases of anorexia nervosa. Kung napapansin natin yung biglaan nating pagpayat, yung hindi na natin pagkain tama, anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa, no, yung biglaan naman nating pagtaba. Uh, usually sa mga pregnant, uh, sa mga nagbubuntis naman, no, uh, ito naramdaman ko rin ito na, yung tinatawag din natin postpartum depression. No, napakahalaga din itong malaman natin as part of uh, depressions and another cases no. Hindi naman siya mental disorder yung mga postpartum depressions, pero kapag hindi kasi ito na trigger, ah kapag hindi kasi ito na na, na treat o na agapan ng maaga, it can lead to a severe depressions. Kaya habang maaga po no, uh, napakaganda ng seminar na to na binigay sa atin ng BP Steya kasi magkakaroon talaga tayo ng awareness when our when it comes to our mental health. And then sabi nga, maintaining good mental health as with maintaining good physical health requires positive actions. So hindi uh, many factors can positively or negatively affect it. Kaya mahalaga po na hindi lang yung physical health natin ang ating in, tinitingnan sa ngayon. Uh, mahalaga rin na makita rin natin, bantayan din natin ang ating mental health. Maaring magaling ma Malusog ka nga physically, but mentally, masyado ka namang stress, masyado ka namang distress, masyado kang nag-iisip ng kung anong-anong hindi maganda sa buhay mo, uh, nag-iisip ka na wala kang trabaho, or uh, ang dami-daming trabaho, hindi pa ako tapos mag-check ng mga output ng estudyante ko, darating na naman yung panibagong output, tapos may ipapagawa na naman sa akin si school head, ako yung coordinator ng ganito, ah, hindi pa pala ako nakakapag-LIS, hindi ko pa pala na-add yung 20 students ko sa LIS. So so ang daming mga uh, reasons no na na mag magti-trigger sa atin for our mental health. So physically okay ka nga pero sa dami ng workload mo as a teacher eh na-stress ka naman, nagkakaroon ka naman ng distress situations kaya we need to maintain both physical both both ano side no physical and your mental health. Ah uh, naiintindihan ko ang mga kasamahan nating guro dito even the non-teaching no, na at this point, sabi ko nga kayo, kahit naka-work from home tayo, sobrang dami ng ating mga ginagawa. Sabay-sabay pa nga, madalas, minsan yung deadline, sinabi nga yung umaga, hapon, kailangan ipasa na agad. Lalo na yung mga learner grades. No? Ang dami niyan. No? So, there are different factors that can influ influence the development of mental illness. No? Yung <coughs> nakita nyo ata, ano, sa inyong mga, sa mga na, na sumagot, sa ating question sa Google Drive, makikita ninyo to, nabasa niyo na sana at nagkaroon na sana tayo ng reflections about this. No? Ito yung mga risk factors and some of the protective measures that we need to understand. No? If yung mga feeling lonely, if you feel lonely, isolated, wala kang kaibigan, or you want to isolate yourself. No? Gusto mo nang magkulong sa kwarto. <laughs> Lack of friends and family. So, These are the different uh, factors that you need to consider. Ano yung mga protective measures na pwede mong gawin if you, if you feel lonely? You need, uh, kailangan mo mag-isip ng mga positivity. Paano ba to at this point in time? Balikan mo lang yung mga uh, 
uh, good uh, good events on your life na pwedeng uh, maging reason sa to be happy. Na there is always sunshine after the rain, sabi nga, no? And having close interaction with friends and family. Huwag kang, as much as possible, be with your family. Eh, kasi at all times, sila pa rin ang uh, makakatulong sa atin. Even even if we are in the distressed situations, our family matters the most. Hmm. Poor, poor education, transport, housing, and leisure facilities. Actually, um, uh, this point in time of pandemic, Marami nagsasabi, marami nga tayo nababasa sa Facebook no? na, na nandito na tayo sa poor education pa uh, part of our life. Kasi nga, hindi naman lahat ng mga estudyante nakakasagot ng module. Minsan, may mga modules nga, lalo na sa elementary level, ang sumasagot si parent. Ang hirap magturo sa mga anak. Minsan, sinasabi rin nila, ang dami mga angal, ang dami mga errands tayong nababasa sa Facebook. So, ano yung protective measures na pwede natin gawin dito? So, sabi nga dito, having access to good education, transport, housing, and leisure facilities. Although, mahirap sa ngayon, but the dep our uh, our department no, of education is doing everything para lang masolusyonan itong mga poor educations natin. We have, sabi nga, DepEd TV. We have itulay online tutorials. Ang daming mga modalities na ginagamit ng ating uh, kagawaran para lang uh, masol masolusyonan yung or maituloy yung pagkatuto ng ating mga estudyante at matulungan ng ating mga parents. Kaya uh, mahalaga din sa sa ating division, sana sa division na bataan na to support this kind of activities. Yung kanina sinabi ko we have itulay online tutorials, no? Uh, napakaganda rin po no, no, from elementary to senior high school level, even ALS. So pwede po silang manood noon if they have internet access. Actually one of the uh, problem dito sa poor education, yung internet access ngayon. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng estudyante natin ay naka, na, merong internet, may wifi connections. Paano yung mga estudyante na natin na nasa bundok? No? Ang hirap nun, ang hirap ma-reach out nun. Here in Olongga po City, merong kaming mga estudyante na nasa bundok. Talagang ang hirap-hirap silang i-reach out. So, kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng mga home visits. But then, home visit nowadays is napakahirap ka rin, pa rin kasi tumataas ang cases natin ng COVID. So number three, we have violence and crime in the neighborhood. Minsan affect, affected tayo dito, no? yung, yung violence and crime. Kapag may mga sigawan sa kapitbahay, may away sa kapitbahay, nagbabatuhan na sila. So affected din tayo kasi baka mamaya may, may masaktan sa atin o, or uh, ma, ma, madamay tayo, mga something like that. Poverty, poor social circumstances, work stress, unemployment, napaka... Sa mga teachers, napaka-pronto yung work stress. No? Maraming teachers, not, not at, hindi lang po sa ngayon, pero dati pa, no? kahit hindi pa pandemic, yung nasa ganitong situations, yung nagkakaroon ng suicidal tendency, even our students, not only in DepEd, yung nasa ganitong situations, sa so work stress. Ano ang pwede natin gawin? So there are a lot of physical activities that you can do. Um, jogging, walking, or swimming or anything that can help you no, relieve your stress level. Yung ibang mga teachers nagsusumba sila or mga non-teaching uh, personnel, may mga ibang mga divisions na or kaya schools na meron silang sumba activities for the teachers and the students. So napakagandang activity rin po nun para to relieve our stress or burn out levels. Unemployment, napaka-timely po niyan ngayon. Marami po tayong mga kababayan ngayon ang walang trabaho. At tingnan din po natin, bantayan din po natin, not only, uh, napakasabi ko nga kanina, we are so lucky as a deputy officials, so, as a government officials kasi may trabaho tayo. Pero paano po yung mga kababayan natin na walang mga trabaho? So, Napakalaki ng ng risk factors nila para dito no, sa unemployment na to. And sana magawa ng solusyon, no? sana magkaroon sila. Ma maibalik pa yun dati. Poor diet, um, par uh, parental mental illness, feeling secure and in control. Sa parental mental illness, napakalaking factors po nito yung genetic factors kapag nasa genes natin. Kaya nga uh, kami, during my time when I was uh, the psychologist of Preda Foundation, isa sa mga activities na ginagawa ko yung genogram. Uh, pag sinabi natin genogram, pinag-aaralan po natin yung, yung kasi, uh, another term for genogram is the family tree. Pinag-aaralan namin yung yung uh, family tree or genogram or tag dito yung yung family history ng aming kliyente kasi ang mental illness kasi can be a genetic factors pwede siyang mamana 
So, kung merong history sa third degree level or fourth degree level or second degree or first, lalo na first degree level, nung clients namin, so, ibig sabihin, malaki yung factors, risk factors na pwede siya magkaroon ng mental illness. Kaya isa rin to sa magandang uh, ma-check rin natin as a features, yung ating genogram or uh, ating family tree. Maaaring hindi yung family natin, hindi yung pamilya natin ngayon, pero maaaring uh, yung anak natin, sa part ng anak natin, family ng anak natin. So, another, maraming maraming points sa family tree or genogram ang pwede natin makita dito sa, sa mental illness na to. And then, substance misuse. No? Gen uh, genetic din tong substance misuse na to. Eh. Uh, substance abuse is a genetic factors din. Not only, uh, not only environmental but also genetic. Kaya maganda rin makita rin natin to. In goods, uh, ano yung mga protective measures nito? Good self-esteem and confidence. No? Personal loss or bereavement. Uh, kapag tayo ay namataya, nawala ng minamahal sa buhay. Actually, ang daming mga cases, sa totoo lang, ang hirap na magbasa ngayon ng Facebook kasi lagi mong mababasa uh, 157 active cases in Olongapo City. Tapos, meron ka mababasa sa baba noon, dalawa namatay because of COVID-19. So, nakakalungkot lang ngayon kasi, syempre, uh, isa sa mga... Uh, uh, problem din ngayon, yung tinatawag natin stigma na ito namatay ito nang dahil sa COVID-19 so hindi ka maka hindi ka makapagkaroon, uh, hindi mo mabigyan ng proper na lamay or living ang iyong kapamilya kapag ganun, no? So, isa yan sa mga malulungkot nating sitwasyon ngayon na walang ka na nga na minamahal sa buhay hindi mo pa maibigay yung magandang uh, magandang living or lamay para sa kanya because of the situations so um Kapag nandito tayo sa sitwasyon na ito, tingnan natin ano yung mga possibilities na pwede natin gawin. Stressful life events, relate na rin natin sa work stress niyan. So, napakarami niyan. Ano yung mga protective measures natin? We, we need to have a rest and recreations or physical activities. No? Pwede ba ngayon ang rest and recreation? Alam mo, as a teachers, nung hindi pandemic, nakakapag R&R tayo no? through our gender sensitivity training or GAD. Pero ngayon mahirap kasi bawal, no face-to-face. -face. Alam niyo naman yung sitwasyon natin ng ating, kababay, ating mga kababayan dito sa Sambales. Nagkaroon sila ng rest and recreation. So tumaas ang cases natin ng COVID. So ayaw naman nating maulit yan dito at magkaroon tayo ng ganyang problema. So mag-rest and recreation sa lang muna tayo sa bahay with our family. We can do, kung ating mga anak ay trigger masyadong ano sa online games by na try natin no samahan natin sila baka makita natin kung ano yung kanilang mga ginagawa online sa online games or Netflix no kung mga kung Korean lovers tayo and then we ha and then pinaka worst situations yung physical sexual and emotional abuse uh, if you are in this kind of situation report the abuse and seek for psychosocial support um, as a teacher or as an adult, ito kasi ang pinakamahirap sa atin, yung report the abuse. Uh, sinabi naman kanina ni attorney na, ayun nga, kapag umabot na yung case natin ng 20 years, so meron na tayong tinatawag na may possibility na ma-dismiss na yung case natin. Kaya hanggat maaari, huwag natin paabutin sa ganun. Kung hindi man natin ma-report yung pang-abuso nangyari, pero... But still, we need to seek for psychosocial support. Counseling, therapy, try po natin yun. No? Wag tayong mag lang dun sa legal process. Kasi kung hindi man natin magawa yung legal uh, process, kasi mahabang processor rin yung pag sinabi mong legal, papasok yung financial, and so and so forth, ang dami pang, ma ang dami pang uh, gastusin. Uh, try to seek for psychosocial support. No, counseling and other therapeutic interventions. Sabihin man natin ngayon na financially, ma'am, marami rin pong gastos dyan. Uh, marami po tayong, sabi ko nga kanina, we have Maribelis Mental Health Hospital na government-owned, tama po ba ako, government-owned siya, na pwede po tayong mag-ask for psychosocial support or counseling or therapy. So, personal action plan. Meron, marami pong sumagot dito and thank you for that. So, nilagay ko po itong personal action plan sa ating activity para makita natin ano yung mga pwede natin gawin sa, sa, sa atin, sa sarili natin, no? if we are uh, doing this kind of activities. So, how will I achieve this? Paano natin makukuha itong mga ganitong situ uh, Paano natin makukuha to? How can other people support us? And kailan natin gagawin to? 
Number one activities, talk about your feelings. No? Napag-uusapan nyo ba yung nararamdaman ninyo? Ano na ba yung nararamdaman ninyo sa kasalukuyan? Kayo ba ay nagugutom na o kailangan nyo na ng morning merienda? Nag-breakfast po ba kayo? Mahalaga po yan. No? So, keep active, not only in Facebook and social media, but also in your life, in your family. You need to be keep active. Eat well, nakakakain pa po ba tayo ng maayos? Nag-breakfast po ba tayo? Drink sensibly. Paano po ba itong drink sensibly? No, isang case po ba ng red horse ang kailangan nating inumin? <laughs> so, drink sensibly po. No? Uh, yung tama lang. At ano po ba yung mga kailangan natin? So, water po is the best medicine. So, lahat po. Water. Keep in touch with friends and loved ones. Huwag po natin i-isolate yung sarili natin. Ask for help if we need one. No? Always ask for help if we need one. Kapag kailangan na kailangan pa natin, ask for help. Hindi, uh, no man is an island. Kailangan po natin ng kasama, kailangan po natin ng tulong, kailangan po natin ng kaibigan. And we need to ask for help. Sabi nga, uh, one of the good qualities for us to have, uh, to be, to, uh, one of the good qualities of a human person is externality. We need to reach out for other people. For, we need to reach out for someone. No? Hindi lang yun tayo mag-isa. Take a break. If we feel na masyado nang marami yung ginagawa natin, kapag if we feel na sobrang dami na ng chechika nating output, tambak na sila mula week 1 to week 4, tapos gagawa ka pa ng documentation mo for your MOV, for your COT, kapag burnout, stress ka, burnout situation ka na, hindi ka na makapag-isip ng tama, take a break. Pause for a while. Napakahalaga po nun. Post for a while. Even one hour lang yan. Mag-Netflix ka, o kaya mag-jogging ka dyan sa bahay nyo, mag-gardening ka, if you love gardens, or kaya your animals, no, talk, you can talk to your animals, that is part of externality as a person. So, do that. no. Take a break. Post for a while. Don't burn out yourself too, don't burn, burn out too much yourself dun sa mga workloads na meron tayo. No? Post for a while. And do something you are good at. Sabi ko nga kana, do something you are good at. If you are if you are animal lover, you can talk to your animals, uh, walk with your animals, or paliguan mo siya, or anything na you can do with your, pe your, with your pet. If you are a plant lovers, marami tayong mga plantitas, plantitas ngayon na naging active ngayong uh, pandemic, do that, no? Walang masama. Tapos maghalinis ka, manood ka ng TV, do something you are good at, no? Accept who you are. Ito po yung napakahalaga. Accept who you are. Self-awareness. No? Mahalaga po ito na magkaroon tayo na acceptance sa ating sarili. Self-awareness to ourselves. And care for others. Hindi lang yung ating sarili, but also other people around us. So sana meron kayong uh, natutunan dito sa ating personal action plan. Malaki sana yung naibahagi ko dito sa inyo at nagawa ninyo. Sabi ko nga kanina, pwede nyo po itong hindi ilagay sa drive kasi sabi personal nga siya. No? Masyado siyang um, uh, sa atin, more on inner self natin yan. So ito yung tinasabi ko kanina, the league table of stress. Pwede po natin sagutan ito ngayon, no? sabayan niyo po ako sa mga hindi po sumagot nito sa Google Drive. Pero sa mga nakasagot na po, tingnan po natin kung nasa ang level na po tayo. Hindi niyo po ipa-plus lahat ng numbers na nakalagay dyan. Hindi niyo po yan ipa-plus. Okay? Mamimili lamang po tayo kung nasaan na po tayong point ng buhay natin. Kaya mahalaga po yung tinatawag nating self-reflections, the holistic or partial reflection of our life para po matingnan natin kung anong level po ba tayo dyan, ano dyan yung nakakapagbigay sa atin ng stress. No? So tingnan pa natin. Uulitin ko po ha, hindi nyo po yan ipa-plus lahat kasi pag tinas nyo yan, libo po ang magiging sagot niyan. Okay. First, kapag death of a spouse, no? Ngayon, pandemic, kapag nandun tayo sa part na yan, death of a spouse, namatayan tayo ng asawa, okay? 100 po, okay? Plus nyo yun, 100. Uh, divorce or annulment, wala namang divorce sa Pilipinas, annulment, okay? Kapag naghiwalay kayo ng asawa mo, 73, so 100 plus 73. Uh, marital or relationship separation, 65, Imprisonment, nakulong ka. So, 
So, imposible naman to sa ngayon, no, sa DepEd. Wala naman tayong nakukulong na na DepEd officials at, at this point in time siguro, no? Sana wala. 63, death of a close family members. Ito po, no, napaka ano yan. Death of a, of a close family members, kapamilya, kapuso, ano man yan. So, 63, personal injury or illness. Nagkasakit, nagkaroon ng COVID-19, nagkaroon ng uh, may sore throat ka, tapos distress ka na, baka mamaya may COVID ka na. So, 53, marriage, yung kasal, no, kinasal ka. Uh, ang, ang kasal naman kasi eh, hindi pa laging masaya, no. There are always ups and downs in marriage. Alam po natin yan. No? Sa mga may asawa na lito, there, there's always ups and downs in marriage. Maaring sa isang taon ang pagsasama ninyo, napakasaya ninyo. Pero after that, we never know what will happen. So that is 50. Dismissal from work. Now, tanggal lang ka ng trabaho, 47. Retirement, 45. Bakit po ang retirement na, na napasok dyan sa league table of stress? Uh, Kung tayo ay sanay sa trabaho tapos bigla ka magre-retar, hinahanap-hanap ng katawan mo yung trabaho. So yan, 45 yan. Change in health of family members. Biglang may nagkasakit sa pamilya natin, 44. Pregnancy, 39. Bakit po ang pregnancy? Sa totoo po, ang mga buntis, alam natin yan. Sa mga mother na dito, sa mga nagbubuntis at plano magbuntis, nakaka-stress naman po talaga ang pagbubuntis. Lalo na po yung first trimester natin. No? Marami tayong nararamdaman na hihilo, nasusuka, at kung ano-ano pang hindi nating maintindihang pakiramdam. So, 39. Sexual difficulties. Okay, 39. Gaining a new family member. Bakit yan? Gaining a new family member, 39. Siyempre, uh, change in financial state, 38. Yung biglang nagbago yung financial state natin from from many, no? from marami kang pera na bigla akong nawalan. So, 38. Death of a close friend, 37. Change in number of arguments with spouse, 35. Change to a different line of work, 34. Large mortgage, 32. Son or daughter leaving home, 29. Meron na po, marami to, lalo na kapag uh, uh, yung mga anak natin ay malalaki na at gusto nang umalis ng bahay, magsalili. No? So, 29. Trouble with in-laws, kung may problema ka sa iyong mga biyanan. Spouse begins or stop work. Kapag nagtrabaho, uh, na nawalan ng trabaho yung asawa mo or kapag nagsimula sila magtrabaho, bakit? Bakit kasama yun? No? Lalo na kapag suspicious kang tao, no? tamang hinala. So, 26. Change in living conditions. Change of personal habits, 23. Trouble with boss, 22. Change in recreation activities, 21. Change of schools. Uh, ito, malaki ito lalo sa mga sudyante. Change of schools sa atin ding mga DepEd uh, employees. No? Change of schools from face-to-face -to, -face to uh, different learning modalities that we are using. So, 20. Holiday. Bakit nakaka-stress ang holiday? Siyempre, kapag nasanay ang mga anak mo na gumagala kayo pag holiday, tapos bigla kang nawala ng budget, nawalan ka ng pera, pampa, pampa, uh, punta sa beach. No? So, nakaka-stress din yan. So, 13. Minor violations of the last 11. So, ipa-plus nyo lang kung alin dyan yung meron kayo. Like, for example, sa akin, marriage, no? 50. So, 50. Uh, nung 39 na nag-pregnant ako. 50 plus 39. So, 89. Ano pa ba? Uh, change in arguments with spouse, 35. So, 89 plus 35. Wala akong calculator. Tingnan natin kung ano yan. So, tingnan po natin sa mga kapwa ko, teacher. So, 89 plus 35. Uh, ano pa yung ano ko dyan? Change in living conditions, 25. Change of personal habits, 23. Change in recreation activities, 21. Change of school, 20. And holiday, 13. So, yung mga yun yung sa akin. So, ipa-plus ko lang yun. No? Kung ang score ko, now, now po ha, na-plus nyo po yung mga sa tingin nyo, meron kayo doon. Okay? Now, add up all the points you have to find your score. Kapag yung score nyo umabot sa 150 points or less, no, relatively low amount of life change and a low susceptibility to stress-induced health breakdown. So, napakababa ng stress breakdown ninyo. So, mababa yung chance no, na kayo ay magkaroon ng health breakdown, mental health breakdown. Kapag uh, 150 points pababa ang inyong nakuhang score. So, ting, uh, pwede po nating balikan yung ating mga sinagot doon sa ating Google Drive. Pwede nyo pong i-check yun. Tingnan nyo po 
yung mga sagot ninyo. Kapag 150 points pababa ang score ninyo, mababa yung chance ng health, mental health breakdown ninyo. Okay? Ang kailangan nyo lang kapag meron kayong mga problems is a personal support from your family, friends, or relatives, or anyone. So, next. Kapag 150 to 300 points, so meaning 50% chance of health breakdown in the next two years. 50% chance of health breakdown. Okay? Kung hindi nyo po babaguhin ang inyong lifestyle. Sabi nga po sa, um, sa transcendence, kung kayo ay nagtuturo ng philosophy na the human transcendence, one of the best essence of transcendence is to... Uh, change new ideas, change our life lifestyles based on the situations that we have nowadays. So, 50% chance of health breakdown yan in the next two years if we are not going to change ourselves. So, 300 points or more. Pag 300 points, pataas, no? 80% chance of health breakdown in the next two years according to the holmes Rahe statistical prediction model. So, kinuha ko po to sa holmes Rahe statistical tools ng league table of stress. No? 80%. So, mataas-taas po yun. Kaya, mga kapakuguro, if we are in this point of our times, no, kapag nandito na po tayo uh, sa punto na to ng buhay natin, magkaroon po tayo ng self-reflection. Tapos, gawin natin yung mga uh, sa tingin natin ay makakatulong sa atin. Yung mga personal, yung mga protective measures na sa tingin natin ay makakatulong sa atin para hindi natin ma-reach out yung mental health breakdown. Sabi ko nga po kanina, uulitin ko lang po, no? Ang mental illness, isang tip lang po yan sa ating uh, mental health. Magkaroon lang tayo dyan ng isang emotional breakdown, pwede na po tayo magkaroon ng mental illness. Kaya habang maaga pa po, mas maganda na uh, balikan natin yung ating mga answers, tingnan po natin kung nasa ang point na po tayo. Okay, may questions po ba? Okay, later po. So, what are the different importance of providing mental health training to our teachers? Napakahalaga po nito. Sana may mga nakikinig din po tayo, mga supervisors and school heads, no? Kasi napakahalaga po na mag-provide ng mental health training sa ating mga teachers. And napakaganda po na activity ng BPSTEA regarding this. No? So, why is teacher well-being important? When, always remember, when teachers feel supported, they are, able, they are better, better able to well, number one, manage the daily stresses of teaching. Teacher well-being is associated with more teachers saying they enjoy teaching. Nasasabi pa ba natin to na masaya tayo sa ating ginagawa as a teacher? No? Higher rates of teacher commitment leading to lower rates of burnout and attrition. Number two, we can establish and maintain effective classroom management strategies that are productive for learning. Teacher well-being is associated with higher rates of teacher efficacy, better understanding of classroom dynamics or classroom management, skillfully use of emotional expression to promote the enjoyment of learning. So, napakahalaga na kapag yung teacher well-being ay naipuprovide po sa atin, no, meron po tayo nito, nakaka na mamanage natin yung stress natin, and we can maintain our classroom, effective classroom management. Alam naman po natin na pag, kung face-to-face -face lamang to, napakahirap din ang classroom management. Meron kang estudyante na biglang, bigla na lang binato, no? Binato yung kapwa niya kaklase or uh, binalibag yung upuan. So magtataka ka na lang anong nangyayari. Magagalit po ba tayo as a, as a teacher kung tayo yung nasa harap? Or titingnan natin yung situations ni student, bakit niya biglang binalibag yung upuan niya o kaya binato yung classmate niya. So there are different classroom management that we can use, effective tools, another training for that siguro. Pero alam ko as a teacher, marami na tayo natin ng mga seminars when it comes to effective classroom management. And then, uh, napaka-importante po, uh, if we have this teacher well-being, is to cultivate supportive and caring relationship with our students. Siyempre, sino ba ang number one stakeholders natin as a teacher? Siyempre, our learners, our students. So, mahalaga na magkaroon tayo ng support and caring relationship with our students. So, teacher well-being is associated with we can improve the student-teacher relationship in a positive school climate. Better modeling and implementation of social and emotional learning practices in the 
classroom. So, ayan po, no? napakahalaga na mga, na magkaroon talaga tayo ng teacher well-being. So, how can you support teacher well-being? Now, for our school heads or sa mga uh, supervisors na nanonood sa atin, paano nga ba natin masusuportahan ang well-being ng ating mga teachers? Number one, equal treatment. No? Ensure the equal treatment of teachers regardless of gender, type of employment. Permanent man yan, provisionary man yan, siya man ay uh, janitor siya, tagalina siya. No? Working hours. Sa, mayroon ako nabasa dati parang nagkakaroon ng uh, ang tawag dito, yung act na gawing 6 hours yung teaching load ng mga teachers pero parang hindi ata siya ginagawa sa kasalukuyan kasi parang I'm not familiar kung batas na ba siya or hindi pa no? and time serve no? lalo na ngayong uh, time of pandemic no? equal treatment, napakahalaga po nito to support our teacher well-being Equal treatment of teachers regardless of gender, type of employment, working hours, and time served. Providing teachers with equal supports and treatments lay the groundwork for fostering a positive school environment. Kapag maganda ang samahan ng mga teachers, ng school head niya, equal lang siya lahat, wala siyang kin kinikilingan. <laughs> okay? uh, hindi po natin may iwasan sa isang environment, sa isang... Uh, school environment natin yung magkaroon ng grupo-grupo um, ang mga teachers. Meron yan. Wala, wala akong natatandang school na, na talagang lahat ng teacher ay into one. No? May unity lahat. Nagkakaroon sila ng unity, yes. Pero meron at meron pa rin pong uh, faction or grupo-grupo ang mga teachers. Meron at meron pa rin yan. So, as a school head, Paano natin i-deal yung ganong situation? Ikaw ba ay mas pabor kay ganitong, uh, ganitong grupo or sa pangalawang grupo or pangatlong grupo? So, kailangan we need to have an equal treatment for all of it. No? Okay, school culture. Create school environments that promote feelings of belonging, respect, value and trust for both teachers and students create school environment no Belo uh, feeling of belonging respect value and trust for both teachers and students positive school environment support the growth of a school community where members including teachers feel connected so mahalaga po to no yung kultura ng school natin na magkaroon tayo ng positive environment Ma-feel na mga teachers natin na they will belong to that school. Kasi kapag ang mga teachers po natin, yung feeling na parang hindi sila belong sa sa, isa, sa area kung saan sila nagtuturo, andyan yung feeling na, ay, gusto ko nalang magpalipat sa ibang school, nandun kasi yung mga friends ko. Pero if they feel connected to each, and, uh, to each other, if they value and respect each other, hindi yan aalis sa school natin. Next, the relationship building. Provide opportunities for teachers to develop professional network that are enable them to learn from one another and connect during times of celebrations and turbulence. Make a concerted effort to foster connections between principals, school heads, and teachers to allow teachers to more easily obtain help from principals to develop their instructional and leadership capacity. Ay, napakahalaga po nito, no? our relationship buildings, our professional networks to each and everyone, our connections to other teachers. Kaya nga, um, sa mga kapwa ko, uh, sa mga guru na nalilito ngayon, napakahalaga din yung mga seminars na inaatina natin during the face-to-face -face time, yung mga mass training natin, during mga regional training natin. Napakahalaga po nun kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, connections with other schools. Like for example, at this point in pandemic, no, nagagamit ko kasi ito eh. Yung, na, na, I mean, hindi naman sa nagagamit yung term ko. Yung, na, 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 nagkakaroon ako ng connections or partnership, the right term, no? The partnership with other schools. If I don't have modules, I'm teaching, kunwari, I, for example, I'm teaching discipline and ideas in applied social sciences. Tapos wala sa division namin yung, yung module na yun. So I can ask help from, from another division. Uh, Ma, meron ba ka bang module ng ganito, pwede po ba ako makahingi? So, yung sharing and partnership with the modules, 
or ano yung pwedeng gawin sa mga students or if you have some problems tapos pwede ka maka-ask ng assistance sa other schools. So napakahalaga po ng mga professional networks natin. And not only with our with, with that no and also with the help of our principals makaka-develop tayo ng mga ganyang uh, relationships yung connections or partnership or linkages kung tawagin natin networking okay next professional learning these in opportunities enable teachers to learn develop and grow together further opportunities show teachers that school and district leaders are invested in their learning and well-being Topic uh, could include managing the emotional labor and stress of teaching, strengthening social and emotional competencies to support student social and emotional growth using uh, SEL interventions in the classroom, building close relationship with students. Next is the last, the last one, teacher's voice. Supply opportunities for teachers to participate in decision making to support their professional growth and connections to the learning environment. Meron ba tayong bosses? Nalilinig ba ang bosses natin sa ating school? No, hindi ba isang tao o dalawang tao lang ang nagde-decide sa bawat activities? Are we participating in decision making? So napakahalaga po niya, no? Malinig ang bosses natin bilang guro. Ma maramdaman natin na tayo ay pinaki pinakikinggan at the same time no, uh, pinapahalagahan as a teacher. So what are the different uh, mental health tips for teachers? There are 15 mental health tips for teachers. Number one, make it a mental health priority. First and foremost, mental health and wellness best practices must be incorporated into training programs early on in teacher education. Uh, actually, in depth ed, no, naka-incorporate na tong teacher uh, mental health uh, awareness training natin. Meron tayo, every October is a mental health month. So, sa mental health month, meron tayo mga different activities that we are doing in our school or in our divisions to promote mental health awareness, not only in teachers but also to our learners. Meron tayo mga suicidal month no, para ma-discuss kung ano yung mga preventive measures and different activities that we do to prevent suicidal tendency of our students and of course of our teachers. So always mental uh, take our mental health as a priority. And always remember there's a good re there is a reason why good teachers quit in their job. Daging may dahilan bakit may mga teachers na umaalis sa kanilang trabaho. Bakit mas pinipili nilang magtrabaho abroad? kesa dito sa atin, lalo na public school teachers na napakalaki ng sahod na ng isang public school teachers compared to private. And we have a lot of uh, benefits. No? We have clothing allowance, crush allowance, PBB, and so and so forth. No? We have a lot of benefits. So bakit mas pinipili ni teacher mag-quit? So there is always a reason behind that. No? And we need to understand it. We need to know what is it. If we are the school heads and we have these good teachers, na, napakagaling ng teacher na to, siya na yung coordinator mo, siya na yung the best teacher, siya na nabigyan siya ng outstanding teachers award, but then nag-resign pa rin siya sa trabaho niya. So what is the reason behind it? So we need to understand that. Number two, seek out or develop resources, programs, and policies. No? Leaders also have a role to play in establishing mental health and wellness cultures in schools across the country. As a second step, school systems need to invest in the mental, physical, social health of their most asset, no, their teachers. So, kailangan natin mag-invest no, sa mental health, physical, and social health of our teachers. Why? Kasi our teacher is the best asset in our school. Wala namang school, uh, wala namang school kung walang teachers and walang teachers kung walang learners. So, always remember that. No? So, by recognizing and rewarding teachers for all what for all that they do, even a little things, so encouraging the use of small groups and counseling and prioritizing mental well-being, administrators can have a dramatic positive impact on the lives of their teachers. So, napakahalaga yung mga rewards. Not only, alam naman natin in Department of Education, paano ba tayo nabibigyan ng rewards sa ating uh, kagawaran? We have different bonuses. We have allowances, cash allowance. So, uh, ka, ito lang lately, the clothing allowance. No, through through financial we are being desked by the department. Pero yung ating schools, paano tayo nabibigyan ng recognitions and reward? Actually, isa sa mga mahalagang best practice ng school namin is yung 
nagbibigay ng mga certificates of rewards sa teachers na no? uh, kung siya ay best in attendance, kung palagi siyang wala siyang record of absence simula June hanggang March, binibigyan siya ng best in attendance na certificate na pwede niyang magamit sa kanyang IPCRF. Most punctual na, na experience ganyan, nabigyan ako ng most punctual award. No? From June to March, ako ang palaging maaga. No? Actually, ako na yung nagbubukas ng, ng school. No? Kasi as a school uh, guidance coordinator designate, Eh, tinitingnan ko rin yung mga estudyante ko kung sino yung mga palaging mga late. No? Kasi kinakounseling ko yan yung mga late, uh, uh, late students. At tinitingnan ko rin kasi kung ilan, ilang beses siyang nalilate pag, pag habitual na yung pagiging late niya. So there's a good, there's a good reason behind that. So yun din ang mga reasons bakit isa ako nabigyan sa most punctual. So there are a lot of uh, rewards or recognitions that we can give to our teachers. Hmm. May isang principal nga kami, nagbigay pa ng isang libo, 1,000 pesos na sa teachers na merong best demo teaching. So there are a lot of things that you can give to your teachers. And mahalaga na ma-recognize natin yung mga efforts ng ating mga teachers. Number three, frame mental health in your own mind in a healthy way. Don't call it mental health if a phrase like well-being makes more sense. Sabi nga, mental health... Uh, Mas maganda na magamit yung salitang well-being. Kaya nga dito sa sa previous slides ko no, how can you promote teacher well-being? Next, grow a healthy PLN, a strong professional learning network both inside and outside of the school building. Napakahalaga po nito na magkaroon tayo ng learning network natin. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, at this point in time of pandemic, no, paano ka ba makakapagbigay ng work immersion if you don't have networks no, outside the school? Paano ka makakasik ng health kung within your school ay wala kang uh, network, hindi mo kaklose yung mga kapwa mo teachers. Uh, my dear teachers, uh, isa sa mga mahalagang points po sa pakikipsama natin sa ating mga kapwa guru, kung ang kaaway naman natin ay isang tao lang or isang teachers lang, medyo okay pa yon, no? Ibig sabihin, it's just a small matter of conflict. Pero kung ang kaaway na, ta na natin or mag may conflict tayo, not only in one teachers but all, all the teachers, eh, ang problema ay sa atin na. Kaya mahalaga nga yung tinatag natin kanina, sinasabi ko kanina, the self-reflection. Ano bang problema kapag lahat ng mga kaguruan natin ay hirap tayo makipag-communicate? No? So, always do that, no? self-reflections. And always grow a healthy professional learning network. Not only outside of the school, but also inside the school building. Kasi kayo-kayo mismo, ang pwede, teachers, ang pwede magtulungan sa isa't isa. Kapag may sakit ka, sino ang pwedeng tumulong sa'yo para magbigay ng module mo? Siyempre, you will ask assistance from your co-teachers. Bess, Mars, Pars, ikaw naman muna ang magbigay ng module sa mga sa advisory class ko. Hindi ako makakapunta. Inuubo ako, sinisipo na ako, may sore throat ako. My gosh, COVID-19 na ata yun. So, tingnan po natin yun. No? Kapag ganun, pwede tayo mag-ask na assistance. Kaya napakahalaga na magkaroon tayo ng Grow Healthy Professional Learning Network with our co-teachers. No? Even to our school heads. To our school heads, uh, especially, no, magkaroon tayo ng ganyan. Bakit? Kasi si school heads natin, when uh, during our ranking or promotions, kapag ayaw niya tayong i-promote, nako, baka isa siya sa ating, sa ating mga ano, na magka-problema. Kaya maganda magkaroon tayo ng healthy relationship with our school heads. Number five, be in the right place. Are we in the right place? Of our teaching job, sabi nga, a job placement that they feel comfortable with, for example, the right fit for the teacher in terms of position, grade level, school policies, or etc. Not every job is a fit for everyone. Always remember that. Not every job is a fit for everyone. Well, intentioned people may counsel you that the kids need you, but you have to take care of yourself or your teaching simply not sustainable. So, be in the right place, uh, mga kasamahan kong guro. If you are, kung ang major mo naman ay araling panlipunan, tapos bigla kang dinala sa mat, na wala kang kaalam-alam sa mat, hirap na hirap kang uh, ituro ang mat, maybe for one year, pwede mo siyang pag-aralan, ikaw magturo, but in the another year, pwede mo siyang i-request sa school head mo or sa master teacher mo or sa headmaster mo na kung maaari, ito ibigay sa iyo yung talagang subject na mas comfortable kang ituro. No? Sabi ko nga, if you are the Araling Panlipunan major, ibigay sa iyo ang social science teaching or the ARPAN 1, uh, ARPAN 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Mga ganun. 
So, mag-request tayo kapag sa pakaramdam natin ay hindi tayo comfortable sa binibigay sa ating uh, subject. Or sa positions natin. In terms of our positions, wala naman kasi tayong uh, magagawa yan kapag first time teacher tayo. No? We, lahat nag dumadaan sa teacher one. Napakalaki na nga lang ng mga senior high school uh, during the first senior high school, no? unang bugso ng senior high school, na teacher two na agad. Pero... Sa regular uh, regular ranking, regular, nasa teacher one tayo. So, if you if you feel na hindi ka lang pang teacher one, pang teacher two ka or teacher three, well, after three years or after a year na pasok ka na sa ranking and promotions, you can do that, no? Magparang ka or magpapromote ka. Set boundaries. Number six. As much as possible, clear boundaries between school and home life. Actually, at Napakahirap po nito ngayon kasi lahat tayo naka-work from home. Hindi natin, madalas hindi tayo nagkakaroon ng boundaries sa trabaho at bahay kasi nasa bahay na mismo yung trabaho natin. Kapag magugulo yung mga anak natin, tapos may kailangan kang deadline na ipasa agad, ngarag na ngarag tayo, nakakadagdag siya sa stress symptoms natin, sa distress symptoms natin kasi sabi ni... Sabi ni school head, kailangan nang ipasa ngayong alas 12 itong report na to. Tapos yung anak mo, ang gulo-gulo, nung hindi ka makapag-concentrate sa trabaho. So, sa mga kapwa ko kaguro, ano, we need to set boundaries as much as possible. No? Clear boundaries between school and home life. Uh, ihiwalay nyo yung magkaroon. Kung, kung ang bahay naman natin ay possible na yung isang kwarto ay gawin nating office. So, we can do that, no? Tapos yung mga anak natin, they, they can play outside during time of works. Avoid toxicity. Ginagawa ba natin to? Avoidance of things, people, departments, committees, events, etc. that are toxic. While developing strategies to deal with other not toxic but still challenging teach, teaching situations. Alam naman natin sa buhay natin bilang guru, ang daming toxic. So are we avoiding those toxic or are we the one creating the toxicity among our co-teachers? So we need to have self-reflection on that. Kung tayo ang nagbibigay ng toxic sa ating mga kapakaguruan, it's about time to change ourselves for the better. Sabi nga, the very essence of human transcendence is to change yourself for the better. No? And how can we avoid toxicity? Sabi nga, avoidance of things, people, or department. Mag, ano tayo, uh, do other things that can avoid those uh, toxicity in our life. Emphasize your pur purpose. Now, remind yourself of your purpose as a teacher. Bakit ka nga ba naging teacher? Ano ba ang vision mo? Bakit mo ba ginustong magturo sa Department of Education? Huh? If not, that gives you a hint of what maybe should come next. Kasi kung hindi mo ma-realize at this point in time, yung vision mo o yung purpose mo, bakit ka ba nandito? It's about time for you to think, asan ka ba talaga dapat? Are you really in this uh, department? Are you in the teaching department talaga? Or nasa ibang profession ka talaga dapat? No? So tingnan natin, always remind ourselves of our purpose as a teacher. Number nine, develop a growth mindset as a teacher. Growth mindset matters for students and they matter for teachers too, yes. Always develop a growth mindset for us. Hindi yun na stick lang tayo sa isa. Sabi ko nga kung sa teacher one, hindi pwede ma-stick lang tayo sa teacher one. Always develop, always uh, seek for development. Kung gusto nating mag-promote, magpa-promote, teacher two. So, sta, uh, madalas, marami mga teachers ngayon ang nag-aaral no, for masteral. Kasi... They are de uh, seeking for development. No? Ayaw lang kasi natin may stock for, uh, for a single uh, position. Siyempre gusto rin natin, bago tayo mag-retard, eh mataas yung ma-receive natin compensation. So isa rin yun. Tsaka ano rin yun eh, for self-development natin, for other uh, self-esteem natin, pag tayo ay nagkakaroon ng promotions. So develop a growth mindset as a teachers. Number 10, teach with gratitude. Ginagawa pa ba natin? Are we teaching with gratitude? Teach with gratitude as much as possible, no? Huwag po natin kakalimutan yan as a teacher. And 11, if you are evil, start small. Focus on the good things and every day, try to have more good things than bad. That is a start. 
No? Pagising pa lang sa, sma sa umaga na start your day with the good things. No? Try to start in a smile. Start small things. No? Hindi yung bigger things agad. Sabi ko, uh, isa sa mga dinidiscuss ko dati sa aking mga students, no? yung partial thinking. No? Start small bago ka mag-proceed sa holistic, holistic thinking. Kasi sometimes if you if you see bigger pictures madalas, kung yun agad ang tinitingnan natin, uh, nagkakaroon tayo agad ng negativity. So start small diba? para mas maganda ang ating umaga. Mas maganda na we can avoid toxicity. Number 12, take care of your body too. Take care of yourself physically. You can do exercise, meditate, or yoga. Or ito napakahalaga, get enough sleep. Kasi pag kulang ka sa tulog, andyan yung mukha kang groge, mukha kang nakakatakot. Kaya dapat get enough sleep. So whatever it takes for your body to feel good. No? Take care of your body. If you take care of your body, you can take care of your mental health being. If you need help, get help. Do not be a hero. If you need formal mental health support in the form of therapy or medication, there is no reason for you to hesitate. So get it. Why wait until you are truly unhappy? Balikan lang natin yung mental health continuum natin, yung personal action plan natin, yung ta league table of stress natin. If you think no, you need help, professional help, please do so. Wag po tayong may stick or may stigma lang sa hindi natin kailangan ang tulong. So mental health matters. Our teachers' well-being matters the most. So if you if we need that one, so don't please don't be don't hesitate, no? Seek for professional help. Number 14, have a life outside of teaching. Napakahalaga po nito, life outside of teaching. One full of creativity and hope and people and possibility. No matter how noble teaching is, it is not worth your well-being. So dapat may buhay po tayo outside sa ating pagtuturo. Marami mga teachers kaming tinutok so madalas kasi hindi na nakapag-asawa dahil nilaan niya na yung buhay niya sa pagtuturo no sa kanya mga estudyante. Mga my dear ko teachers lalo na yung mga bata-bata pa ngayon mga single plan. So have a life outside of teaching of have a life outside of teaching. No? Mag-enjoy ka sa buhay mo no. Reach uh, lumabas ka sa iyong kahon na pinaglagyan sa sarili mo no. And 15, don't feel stuck. If possible, never get stuck where you feel like you have to teach or can quit. There is always a way forward. Anytime anyone feels stuck, it can convince you your situation is worse than it really is. Don't, don't feel stuck kung nasaan ka ngayon. So if you need to reach out, if you need new ideas, if you need help, please do so. Don't stuck in your situations. Hmm? And of course, by cultivating teacher well-being, teachers and leaders can create happier, healthier, and more sustainable education systems that reinforce relationship building and provide wellness and restoration support to all classrooms while learning remotely and as schools reopen. So, yun lamang po. Maraming salamat po. So, if you have comments, inquiries, or suggestions, or Inquiries now, if you have to, please contact me at eresa underscore akbay at yahoo.com. So, thank you po sa mga kaguruan ng bataan. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating speaker about mental health awareness in the 21st century teacher, si Madam Mary Eresa Benson. Maraming maraming salamat for a very comprehensive explanation about mental health which is very relevant nowadays lalong lalo na sa ating mga teachers and sa ating mga estudyante. Yes, thank you um, din Arthur. po. Ayan. Do you yes, have any question for uh, Ma'am Eresa? Well, actually partner, nakita naman natin ano, na very clear ang um, uh, Benson and Ayun nga, nakita natin yung napakig table of stress, partner. Kasi yes. minsan hindi naman, ang alam lang natin, we are stressed. Pero level na ba tayo? Ano, di, parang hindi hindi tayo masyadong napofocus doon. Stress ako, stress ako, ganun lang, di ba? So, ayun, sinabi sa atin, ano, ni Ma'am, yung mga leveling na talaga. Meron na talaga numerical uh, figure. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. Even stress pala na represent na two numerical uh, figures ano, mam partner. Mam Eresa, may yes. I ask one question. Ito lang, oh, yung sa mga teacher concerns, syempre marami tayong mga nakikitang teachers na very stressed na so, uh, when it comes to teaching, dagdag pa yung mga personal life natin kasi madaling sabihin na ihiwalay natin yung professional life sa personal life. Um, pero hindi madaling gawin. Hindi po ba? So, would you recommend sa isang teacher na very stressed na sa trabaho, napapabayaan niya na talaga yung kanyang work sa school at the same time uh, yung kanyang mga responsibilities, no? Uh, would you recommend na mag-out siya sa service or o humanap siya ng talagang work na fit para sa kanya or kung saan siya masasaya? Actually, um, hindi ko at this point in time hindi ko muna i-recommend yung mag mag uh, work uh, mag-stop siya sa work kasi alam naman natin at this point of pandemic napakahirap maghanap ng trabaho. Sabi ko nga kanina, we need to seek for help. No, wag natin kakalimutan if we feel na stress na tayo, hindi na tayo makapag-focus sa ating trabaho na sa anxiety, depressions na tayo. Ito na yung time, wag tayo mag-hesitate, humingi tayo ng tulong. Napakahalaga nung professional learning network natin inside our school and outside our school. Pag inside our school, if we have friends sa ating mga kako-teachers, why not ask for their help? No? A counseling, kung active po ang ating guidance counselor unit sa school natin, we can ask for help. Uh, ang problema nga lang po sa ngayon kasi napakakunti lang ng ating mga registered guidance counselor. Napakakunti lang po nila. Pero we can ask for assistance if we have registered guidance counselor in our division of Bataan. We can ask for assistance sa kanila kasi they are trained and well uh, train enough to to assist not only the learners but also our teachers para tulungan ng ating mga teachers lalo na in this point of pandemic kung ano yung pwede nilang gawin sa kanilang uh, personal life and then sa kanilang teaching life. So always ask for our ano muna yung pwede nating mahingin tulong sa ating division kasi our division meron naman po silang mga uh, coordinators that can help us when it comes to uh, mental health uh, problems of our teachers. So, tingnan po muna natin ano po yung meron sa divisions natin. So, ask for our assistance first. Kung kung kaya po natin i-reach out ang ating school head, no? ma-inform si school head, mas maganda na si school head ang mag-assist sa atin to help our teachers na sa tingin natin ay nangangailangan po ng tulong. At sabi, right. ko kanina, <laughs> sabi ko po kanina, no? yung reflections po, napakahalaga rin po nito. No? Always check our self-reflections. Ayan. Siyempre, I agree to that, Mama. Maraming maraming salamat. No? So, huwag tayo mawala ng pag-asa, mga kapwa ko, guro. No? Yung stress ay uh, kakambal na ng ating pagiging teacher. Ma'am, partner, gusto ko lang i-share itong uh, nabasa ko kahapon habang nagpapamigay ako ng module kasi, siyempre, kailangan natin maging busy na konti. Share ko lang to about yes, connected yan dito sa mental health na pinag-uusapan natin. Sabi dito, sometimes it's easy to be so fully engaged in serving other people that we forget to rest our mind, body, and soul. But you have to rest for a while and when you are refreshed, you can carry on your responsibilities in a more efficient and effective way. So, kailangan natin ng uh, mag-pause for a while. Mag-stop muna kahit panandali. Ibigay natin sa sarili natin even Saturday and Sunday. no? Kasi from Monday to Friday nag-work tayo. So, Saturday and Sunday, i- irigalo natin para sa sarili natin yan. Para maiwasan yung mga mental problems like this. Ayan. Yes. Ayan. 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 Thank you so much, partner. Sure. Ah, di ba, partner? Hindi laging ano, okay. Kung baga, yes. nagkakaroon din tayo dapat nagpapahinga din tayo at nasisira yes. din yung ating mga kat- ano, katawang lupa di <laughs> so, sabi nga. Okay. Uh, partner, meron na lang ako last question kay ma'am for personal. Yes, ma'am. Siyempre, tayo as teachers, pag na-stress na po tayo, ma'am, and feeling natin kayang uh, ayaw natin mag-reach out sa ating family or friends. Pwede po ba, ma'am? Parang nawala sa Ayan, me- medyo naglag ang ating partner. Ayan, pero uh-huh. sabi nga, di ba? Ayan, ma'am, tama ba? We have to be sensitive sa mga nasa paligid natin. Akala natin, 
eh tumatawa-tawa yan pero hindi natin alam yung pinagdadaanan niyan depends Yes. Yes, yes o po kailangan yes, kailangan po natin maging sensitive sa lahat ng pagkakataon. Minsan actually nga sa pag tinatanong tayo, nagtatanong tayo sa mga kasamahan natin, na alam naman nating burnout. Okay ka lang ba? Sasabihin lang niyan, okay lang. Pero deep inside, in deep inside sinasabi niya, stress na stress na siya, gusto niya ng umiyak sa stress. So minsan kailangan natin maging sensitive sa mga ganun. Huwag nating gawing joke-joke lang ang mental health mga kapwa ko guro. No, huwag po natin siyang gawing katatawanan kasi ito po ay seryosong bagay na minsan na nasa set aside na lang natin. So kaya nga bakit nga po ba maraming teachers ang lalo na nung hindi pa pandemic ang nagkakaroon ng suicidal tendency because of this yes. matter, no? Kaya wag po nating maging joke-joke lang to. Teacher well-being is very important to all of us. Kaya be sensitive sa mga nararamdaman po na ating mga kapwa guro. Sometimes yung mga toxic people, they are also in the state of distress situation. Kaya kailangan din po nila ng tulong. Kaya wag Hindi hindi naman ibig sabihin na iiwasan na natin sila but then let's try to find out ano yung mga pwede nating magawa para sa kanila. So the the best coordination with our school head ay napakahalaga po no yung 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 communications and our relationship building with our school heads kasi sila din yung makakatulong po sa atin pag nasa ganitong situations na tayo sa school Ayan. level po. Ama ka dyan, ma'am. Ma'am, partner. Hello, partner. Naririnig mo na ba ako? Ayan. Sige, ma'am. Go. Number one, number one yata sa league table of stress ko yung internet connection. <laughs> Totoo okay, yan. Para sa atin lahat yan. Oo. Yung, yung kailangan-kailangan mo nang isend kasi biglang walang internet. Diba? <laughs> oh, Tama. Yung, okay. yung deadline na. Ayan. Hello, ma'am. Be- yung nag- na-park po kanina na question. Okay pa po. Narinig mo nyo pa po ba? Okay, okay naman po. Clear po. Kung hindi po ma makakapag-reach out sa family or friends, available at pwede po ba namin kayong uh, uh, i-contact anytime? Opo, um, you can email me po. Hindi na sa... pag-abising. Opo, pwede nyo po akong i-email sa eresa underscore akbay at yahoo.com or even on my Facebook, Mary Eresa Benson lang po yung pangalan ko sa Facebook. <laughs> Yeah. You can reach me out. Pwede niyo, po i-reach out. Pwede niyo po akong i-reach out. If you have uh, things na kailangan ninyong um, questions for the, my topic o kaya kung meron kayo ma- for guidance na rin and counseling, no? pwede na rin po. Yes, thank you so much po for being with us this morning. Okay, maraming maraming salamat po muli, Ma'am Mary Eresa Benson. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Ayan pala pa naman natin partner, ang ating napakagaling na speaker this morning. Alright, thank you, Ma'am. Thank you so much. Alright, partner, dahil gustong gusto ng Bapteya na mabigyan ng uh, makabuluhang learnings ang ating mga teachers and administrators na kasama natin, hindi lang sa balanga, at bataan kasi meron din tayong mga viewers from Quezon City and Manila. Ayan, meron tayong pahabol wow. this morning. Okay? Partner, gusto mo bang makilala ang ating speaker this morning? Siyempre, gusto ko nang makilala yan. Ayan. Ayan, ipapakilala ko na siya. And for sure, maraming tayong matututuhan dito. Okay. So, she is an expert in positive possibilities for people, especially students. She is a globally competitive educator and coach in the field of mathematics, ICT, and robotics. She integrates her BS accounting degree and professional education units with 15 years of experience engaging students across integrated curriculum fields. She provides inspiration and information to make sure that her learners reach their full potentials, develop positivity, productivity, and responsible citizenship. Jen Lu adds extra value with certification in mathematics, exploring computer science, robotics, information, and communication technology, sustainability, graphic design, programming, and other related studies. She has been an educator in the Philippines, not only in the Philippines, but in Mississippi, Virginia, and New Mexico in the United States of America. She also serves as the director of RoboFest Philippines, RoboRave International Rules Committee, representative 
or representative in Asia Pacific, NASA JPL, Solar System Ambassador, New Mexico, AEOP Cohort Member, NMPED Resource Speaker, Math Educator, NASA Technology Speaker, Robotics, and ICT Coach. So napakabig natin ang ating speaker this morning. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our third speaker this morning. Palakpakan natin si Ma'am Janelu Pangilinan Riel. Ayan, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning po. Good morning pa ba? Baka gutom na. Baka maka-apekto ako sa mental stress. Gawin ko pa lang ako kayo na ano. Hindi, sana naman. Dahil marami po yung natutunghan sa inyo this morning. Ayan. Minsan feeling ko, nakikinig kanina pa ako dyan sa backstage, no? Nakikinig ako yung attorney, so parang kakaroon ako ng self-reflection on sometimes we tend to say more because we want to share more and we are we are sometimes not conscious kung ano yung mga sin-share. And then looking at uh, Mars Eresa's uh, talk, Parang yung stress, para ewan ko, baka kami talaga ni Wax yung inspiration niya kung bakit nasusulat niya yung mga nilista niyang stress. Parang lampas kasi ako sa 300, so parang mali yung gauge Mars. Parang 90% dapat yung nilagay sa akin, <laughs> 90% stress. So, uh, so every time I do um, coaching and teaching, etong etong i-share ko ngayon is on the digital capacity side naman. Ano. So knowing you have to limit what you share and knowing that you have to um, share something. So, ito yung parang feeling ko balance na, na way. So, ayan. I would, I would be sharing a wakelet and I would be at the same time. Ayan. Okay. So, ready na po ba? Patingin nga po sa comments kapag uh, I still... I'm at the right mental stage and I'm ready to learn. Tingnan natin kung meron pa ba akong kausap. <laughs> Ayan, sa ating chat. So, ready na po ba kayo to hear and uh, learn? So, as we as we work, as we go along, you can uh, do a split screen. So, pwede po akong mag-share kasi meron tayong mga gagawin. Uh, wait lang po, i-share ko lang yung aking screen. Ayan, ready to learn na si Ma'am Jenny. Hi, Ma'am Jenny. Ito kayo. Ayan, Sir Wax pa. Ayan. So, ito yung aking... Uh... Ayan, teka lang. Lalabas lang ako dito. Ayan, ito yung ating uh, topic. And then, what you can do po is create a new tab. Hilahin lang po natin. And then we can do a split screen para habang uh, sinasabi ko, ganyan lang po gagawin natin. Habang dinidiscuss ko, uh, pwede po kayong sumabay sa akin. Yan. Ganyan po. And then, let's see dun sa ating, uh, eto, ito sa ating, ayan, still ready na. Meron pa, ma'am. Okay, so ito at least uh, we have here. Okay, so I'm going to share with you uh, what you call Wakelet. So Wakelet is a community. So Wakelet is a digital collaboration. Ito yung safe mag-share at marami kang may share Ito yung will keep your sanity because you don't have to go through a lot of stress trying to figure out how can I organize my ideas? How can I share to my students? How can I keep confidential matters to myself? And how can I uh, make sure that I am not uh, violating as much as I I am sharing information. So, itong Wakelet is a digital collaboration. Saan ba nag-start itong Wakelet? So, if um, you uh, are seeing my screen now, so, ito po. Pwede nyo mo nang ilaki. Sabihin ko sa inyo kapag ka-game na. So, Wakelet is a digital collaboration. So, ito po, uh, I'm parang baby pa ako dito sa Wakelet, pero I feel like uh, getting to see all the features, kailangan na to agad ma-share sa community and the teachers would benefit from. 
before the pandemic, masyado tayong overwhelmed sa dami ng uh, documents na kailangan nating i-keep, sa dami ng ating uh, mga ginagamit na tools, ang dami-daming ibinigay sa atin na resources, hindi natin malaman kung paano siya pagsasamahin into one. So, no namang hindi pa pandemic, ang dami-dami ding binibigay, ang daming papel, meron akong yung bag, ang tawag ng asawa ko dun is uh, the third passenger sa sasakyan kasi lagi mong dala yung bag ng mga chechikan mo pero hindi mo naman na chechik sa bahay. So, going digital is one way of lessening your, lessening your stress and doing more that you can anytime, anywhere, as long as my internet Uh, or even without the internet because you can uh, download materials from it. Now that we are in the digital era, ito yung latest craze na pinagkakaguluhan ng mga tao lately. Okay? So if you are not part of the Wakelet community yet, you can search us up at uh, Facebook. Pero for now, let's get to know Wakelet more. Baka meron na rin po ditong, meron na ba ditong part ng Wakelet community? Silipin muna natin yung ating Uh, comments. Meron na po ba ditong ano, wakelet uh, people? So if somebody would be asking, baka pwedeng uh, pa-help po sumagot sa mga chat kasi di ko kayo nagkita eh. So kung meron na po ditong mga part ng uh, wakelet, kasi bago pa lang po ako dito pero I would share it already. So ano ba yung, saan ba galing itong wakelet? So if you, I would share this link pala, the collection. Uh, so you can uh, wait lang. You can see it. Ayan. Copy. Part sila lagay ko para pwede nilang sa ating chat. Para pwede nilang mag-visit. Palagay na lang. Okay, so if you uh, can click to that link, I can uh, share with you the slide already, ngayon pa lang. So if you click the first part, the Wakelet LinkedIn, so this is our Wakelet uh, info. So this is a uh, best way to save, organize, and share online content. This is absolutely free. And ang sabi dito sa... Wala pang nagbabago, no? Ah, sabi dito, Wakelet is free and will always be free. So, if you get to a page where it's asking you for payments, then you might be in the wrong page. Wakelet allows you to organize, annotate, and interact directly using the platform. You can keep it private or share it with other people. So, you can actually use this in sharing information to a group of uh, within your department, within your school, or within uh, the community, or kahit na uh, open to the public. <clears throat> okay, so the Wakelet for Educators link is found on the second part of the link. So if you click that po, it will take you to a sign up page. So if you want to jump along, you can uh, sign up for free. Again, ulitin ko po free ito. It's a platform with infinite number of positivities and possibilities. So you can create newsletters, lesson plans. It can be used for group projects. It can be used as a collaborative platform for research. Oops, sorry. It can be used to create assignments. It can be used to create uh, digital portfolios. And it can be a reading list like a mini library. So kung may mga open resources, you can create a collection that has all the reading uh, materials in one platform. So kung ikaw ay gumawa ng mga modules na gusto mong i-share for to have a digital library, you can create a collection within Wakelet. So ano ba yung mga examples nito? So a newsletter is like this. Okay, you can uh, insert emojis and other stuff. Um, you can put important dates, make it as a, an announcement for your announcements and calendars. You can also create lesson plans. So, ano itsura ng lesson plans? So, you can have, later natin, uh, student leader, leadership lesson plan. Ito pa yung example dyan. Pag kinlik nyo, you can put the goals. So, all the parts of your lesson plan, you can put it in there. And then, pwede ka maglagay ng uh, Q&A videos. 
uh, links and other stuff. You can also put your quizzes in there for uh, any any uh, quiz platform. It can it be uh, Kahoot. It can be um, what forms. You can put uh, Google Forms. You can put Microsoft. And then for group projects, you can ask your students to present their projects in there or uh, upload uh, or create a collection as a group project. Uh, for researches, you can um, put all the parts of the research if you want it to be showcased by the student. And then sa assignment naman is you can ask students to create an assignment and post in one uh, collection. So, para pag nag-grade ka, dito ka na lang titingin. So, titing titingnan mo lang yung uh, mga sinabmits. So, kunyari, ito yung mga estudyante mo. And then, for portfolio naman, you can uh, put your own digital portfolio. If you want to your students to get to know you more, then you can put your information in here and they can simply follow you. So, sinend ko sa inyo yung isa sa collection ko, you, you're going to see that you can follow me. So, para tong ano, social media and um, digital resource in one. And of course, for reading list, so ito yung ating library. So, you can have uh, your, if you have uh, digital links to books, for example, you're teaching English, pwede kang maglagay ng lahat ng literature na nakapaloob dun sa module mo or, or mga videos na or like uh, audio books na nasa YouTube na pwede mong i-link dito for them to uh, be able to uh, read, audio read or digitally read yung ating mga resources. These are for English teachers. These are for social studies teachers, uh, edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. You can have... Um, scenarios like stories that you can put in and you want to react to them okay so yan yung mga kaya mong gawin so dito sa ating target is we are going to try to create an account uh, you may choose to listen you may choose to interact right away you may choose to uh, create stuff right away and you will be sharing your collection later and you are going to post the collection online now how do we get started so eto pong pangatlo na link na nilagay ko is everything you need to know. This is the user manual for the Wakelet. It is the ebook. So, ano bang meron dito sa ebook na to? So, ang, uh, ito is the Educator's Guide to Wakelet. So, let's ride the waves. So, ito yung uh, galing sa Wakelet. Ano? So, within the the course, so okay lang, huwag kang magpanik kung di mo makuha lahat. So, ang ating kukunin lang for today is basic. Um, the objective for me here is to share STEM or STEM learning to you. Uh, science, technology, engineering, and uh, math or science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So, we can have everybody on board. It uh, It is uh, a step-by-step -step procedure on how to create a wakelet, how, uh, how to create an account, how to create a collection. So, yung gagawin natin ngayon is super basic. Everything else is here. And if you want to join the community, you can find us online via Facebook, Wakelet Philippines. And... Ayan. So, ito yung ating gagawin. So, lalabas ako dyan at ide-demo ko sa inyo. So, let's ride the wave now. So, what we are going to do is to create an account. So, ano ba yung, paano ba tayo magkikreate ng uh, account? Alam po, ha? Ibibigay ko sa inyo ulit ang link. Dat pala binayagin sa iyo, parts. Agad. Okay. Wait, ay, binigay ko na pala sa inyo yung wakelet ko. So, pwede na kayo doon mismo mag, uh, mag start. Ito. Click natin to And then, I'll give it to user wax. Ayan. Palagay na lang po sa ating comment section. Ayan. Pakiclick nyo po. And then, uh, I will give you about, let's say, Two to three minutes so everybody can get in and sign up para masabayan nyo po ako. Okay, so three minutes. Sabihin nyo po sa akin kung kayo ay naandyan na. Ayan, Sir Wax, pasend nga sa akin ang link ng FB para doon ko titingnan, ano, para hindi na ako dito dito titingin sa ano natin. Ayan. 2 to 3 minutes. Sige po, iintayin ko kayo. 
para sabay-sabay tayong sumabay mga kaalon. So, ang tawag natin mga kaalon. Kasi we're riding the wave. Sa messenger na lang, Sir Wax, para doon ako sa, sa phone ko pupunta. Para kita ko kayo, hindi na ako pupunta sa StreamYard. Sa FB na lang. Ayan, we have two minutes. So, dapat po kayo ay nandito. So, what are you going to do? Ang um, gagawin po natin ay... Oops, wait lang po. At ang internet ay... Sabi nga ni ma'am kanina ay nakakadagdag ng stress. <laughs> Pero, wala naman tayong choice. Kasi nga... Uh, alam po... Kung saan-saan napunta ito eh. Ayan, wakelet lang. Ay, marunong pa sa atin minsan yung, in, yung ano eh, wakelet, ay yung internet. Marunong pa kung saan natin gustong uh, pumunta. Ayan, buti na lang. Doon po ako titingin sa ating Facebook para sa inyong mga reaction. Pakipusuan nga po kung kayo ay nakasunod na. Meron pang 418. Pakipusuan nyo po kung kayo ay naka-open na. Dito ko titingin. Ayan. Sir Wax, pwede mo, nang, pwede mo kong tanggalin dyan sa window para medyo mas malaki. nag error siya eh. Wait lang po. Dito ako dadaan sa kabila. Kasi ma masa sign out po ako. Ano, pagka dyan. Ayan. Okay. So, what you can do is sign up. Okay. And then, pipili po kayo dyan. It's either uh, you want to sign in with your Google account. Uh, want to sign in with your Microsoft account, your Apple account, or your Facebook account. So, if you have plans to teach abroad and you signed up with your Facebook account, ito yung laging iko-call, lalo na kung mag-US kayo, I don't recommend signing up with Facebook because uh, hindi po siya maglo-load sa mga districts doon. Nakablock po ang Facebook sa karamihan sa school district. So, it's safer to use Google account or Microsoft account or sign up with email. So, after you click that, it's going to ask for your name, your email, your password, your date of birth, and then uh, create your account po. So, ayan. Pakipusuan nyo po kung kayo ay meron ng account para makasunod po tayo sa, sa ating uh, task. Para umabot tayo ng 12. Madali lang naman. Once na nandun na kayo, mabilis na lang tayo. Kailangan lang kayong makapasok doon. Ayan. Titingnan ko kayo dito. Ayan. Marami na ako nakikita ang puso. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yehey. Meron na kayong uh, meron na kayong uh, account. Sa so, mga konti na lang. Pag nakita ko na yung maraming umaangat na puso, then we can one more minute. Ayan, marami ng puso. Ayan, nagtaasa na yung mga puso. Okay, so let's go. Once you are there, so once na nandyan ka na po, uh, you are going to have, wala, wait lang po, na, nawala yung aking wakelet. Ayan. So, once na nakagawa ka na, uh, it will look something like this. Pero wala po kayong laman since uh, bago pa lang po kayo. So, what you have to do is you click the homepage, yung inyong bilog. So, sa inyo po, dahil kung bago yan, wala pa po yung picture. Click nyo po yung bilog dito sa upper right hand corner. And then, it's going to take you here. So, this is going to be your dashboard, your homepage. And then, what you will do is to click edit profile so if you click the edit profile you can change your uh, profile image or any picture that you want, would like to put in there you can change the header you can change the name kung ano po yung gusto nyong display name na pag pinuntahan yung inyong wakelet account yun po yung display name na makikita kung meron kayong mga alias aliases na katulad ng kung meron kayong uh, youtube channel Uh, pwede nyo pong ilagay yung name nyo sa YouTube channel kung you want, if you want to keep that as a wakelet. And then, type in here some information that you would like to share. So, ano po ba yung inyong mga uh, uh, 
uh, ano affiliations or you want ano ba yung gusto nyong subtitle or want description of yourself so once you're done put in in the header image the profile image then everything else that's on the list ang ikigagawin lang po natin is to click save so ang mangyayari po pag save natin ayan ganito siya makikita ng madlang people and if you have ito pa pala uh, edit profile tayo nakalimutan ko sabihin sa baba po merong mga social media icons so you can click that you can click the plus sign and kung meron kang link linkedin account twitter account facebook account and kung may website ka that you use for your classroom that you want to share to the public pwede din pong i-paste diyan and then save lang po save okay so ang mangyayari save nyo po ulit and then magiging ganito may nakita po akong sad face hindi ko alam kung bakit so signal natin ng Uh, ano bang maganda dito? Yung uh, care emoji, yung smiley na may heart. Uh, po, smiley na may heart. Noted parts. Smiley na may heart kung kayo ay nakapag-edit na. So, I can only give you 3 minutes kasi kailangan matapos tayo ng 12. Baka magka-problema tayo sa mental, uh, mental health. Kapag di tayo nakakain sa tamang oras. Okay. Yung care emoji, smiley na may heart kung uh, okay na po tayo. O, papalayasin ako ni Sir Wax pag di natin nabuo. Ayan. So, marami na akong nakitang mga care emoji. Okay. So, in order for you to create a collection. So, sa, sa Wakelet may mga collections. Ano yung mga collections na uh, ginagamit? So, ito po yung aking sample. So, I click home. Ito po yung aking mga collections. So, sa ating homepage, kung pag ikinlik nyo po yung home, nandyan naman po yung ano yung mga laman ng iyong uh, collections. So, pag Makikita nyo po dito yung plus sign, uh, looking into your profile, ito po yung account. Kasi may, pwede ka magkaroon ng mga sub-account sa loob. Ito yung main account mo. Uh, you have, you are going to see here kung sino yung iyong fina-follow at kung sino yung nagpa-follow sa iyo. So, parang social media. How many collections do you have? So far, I have 10. How many bookmarks or links are there inside my collections? There are 303. Kasi may mga nag-collaborate na ng mga studyante sa akin. And how many groups collection, group collections do I have? I have 3. So, um... Since I'm a Lego Spike Prime influencer, this is something that I want to share. So, view collection. Ito yung kaya mong gawin doon sa loob ng iyong uh, wakelet. Tingnan natin. So, ito yung ginawa ko. So, if you, since I'm a STEM enthusiast. Okay. So, this is, uh, if I click edit. Okay. So, pwede ako maglagay ng cover image. For example, ito yung inyong lesson or ito yung inyong collection. Uh, you want to put a cover image and then you can type in here uh, what you want uh, as the introduction, the title and the introduction of your collection. Pwede nyo pong ilagay dyan. And then you can also have, you can also insert information here. So, this is the Lego Spike Prime. So, I'm going to share information about the kit. And then, uh, meron kayong makikita ang mga plus, plus signs dyan. So, itong mga plus signs po ay mga, mga pwede nyong i-insert. So, if you click the plus sign, you can paste a web address. So, anong gagawin ko? So, nyari, uh, Lego Spike Prime ang gusto kong ilagay. So, type ko lang po, Lego Spike Prime. So, ito yung maganda dito. Yung uh, resources, credits to the resources, pwede ko na po ditong kunin sa online. Kunyari ito, gusto ko sa mismong official Lego education. So, the credit is given to whom it is due. So, hindi ako magkakaroon ng liability kasi dito ko kainuha. So, pwede kong kunyari ito, uh, saan ba? Discover. Uh, hanapin ko yan. Kunyari ito yung uh, Spike Prime. I can copy this link. So, highlight nyo lang po, copy. And then, you are going to go to your uh, wakelet. Ipipaste nyo lang po yan dito sa ating uh, box. And then, papasok na po yan agad dito. Ngayon, paano ma'am kung nagkamali ako? You can edit. 
Okay, pwede mo siyang palitan. Of course, yun pa rin, doon pa rin siya galing. And then, done. And then, kung nagkamali ka, hindi, ko, hindi mo naman dapat na-insert. Hindi nyo po i-click, i-hover nyo lang yung mouse. And then, click on the uh, delete button na nandito yung icon, yung basurahan. And then, delete. And then, confirm that you are going to delete. So, ano pa yung pwede mong gawin? You can add text. So, for example, this is a text. Sige, click nyo lang po yan. Meron ditong add text, uh, add image, add bookmarks, add PDF. So, it's going to save you time na hindi mo na i-download sa device mo yung mga PDF. I-dedirecho mo na dito. Uh, you, pero kung may mga na-download ka na, pwede mo rin namang i-upload dito. Uh, another thing you can add is a tweet. You can add a tweet. You can add a video using Flipgrid. Flipgrid po ito. Uh, YouTube, you can also add a link to a Google Drive or a OneDrive. Be very careful lang po dito sa Google Drive at OneDrive kasi sometimes meron talagang super galing na mga hackers na kayang pumasok sa inyong drive once you give them information. So just to be safe, pwede pong at least dito muna kasi yung mga nilagay mo naman sa OneDrive sa online mo lang din karamihan nakuha unless you want to really share the drive. Okay, so ito po ay text. So, ang ginaw, pag kinlik nyo po yung add text, ito po yung lalabas. Yan, lalabas po yan. So, ito po yung aking uh, ginawa. Wait lang, tanggalin natin yung extra. Ito po yun, edit ko lang. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 things to choose from only. So, you can type highlight, you can bold face, you can italicize, you can underline. Yun lang kaya mong gawin sa formatting ng font na yun. Uh, wala kang mapipiling font style. So, kung it's, it's as it is, uh, you can unclick para bumalik sa dati. You have two size, three sizes. That's the this is the H1 or header 1. This is H2 which is a little bit uh, smaller. And then, pag pag kinlik mo, pag wala kang sinilik, ito yung normal fonts style niya um, ulit. Gawin ko siyang header kasi gusto ko siyang maging subtitle. And then, you can do bullet list. You can do uh, alignments only. Left align, centered, at saka yung right aligned. And you can also put links din dyan. So, meron kang gustong ilagay. And then, kung tapos ka na, uh, you can also do this. You put enter. Uh, type uh, click enter sa yung keyboard or hit enter and then you can uh, type for example any description of what you want to say on the about page and then you can delete or post so once na nag okay ka dyan, hindi magkakaiba na sila ng formatting mapapansin nyo and then uh, pwede ka rin maglagay ng bullet list so limbawa yan lagay lang po ako ng sample and then, click done. So, ganyan po yung magiging itsura. Okay, you can always go back and edit. Uh, gusto mo, title lang talaga. Then, I can delete that. So, if you want to be uh, engaged in, uh, ano yun, in more, give more information to your student about certain topics, pwede po yan. So, ito po yung ginawa ko, sample. And then, I put the uh, references because I had to rewrite or rephrase, paraphrase, as an introduction, I did put uh, a link that is going to take me to uh, mid-school STEAM learning and then where to get them. So, sino po yung ating exclusive distributor ng ating Lego kit sa Philippines? That's Felta Multimedia Inc. And then... Uh, an introductory video about Lego Education Spike Prime. And then what what you need to know about the kit. So, ito po yung mga pwede nating uh, ilagay. And also, we have some tutorials like this. Ayan, ito po yan may nakalagay dito na tutorials. And then, lesson plans. So, pwede na nating i-embed ang ating mga lesson plans na nandito. And also, you can have reviews or you can ask a student to review the, what they, like a reflection of what they learned so they can uh, add in here or like comment. So, paano natin i-arrange? So, ito po ay, niliitan ko para kita nyo. So, ito pong uh, mga nilagay natin mga entries, pwede nyo po yung buhatin at ilipat. So, if you, medyo lakahin pala natin ang konti. Baka hindi nyo kita. So, pwede nyo pong i-click at ilipat. So, parang Google Classroom lang. Pwede nyo pong mag-arrow up. 
arrow down to move it. Kasi pag mahaba na yung collection, medyo mahirap. So, ano pa yung magiging um, advantage nito? So, you have a full collection of everything that the students would need to know here. You have um, linking all the references from the main source. Kung saan nyo talaga siya nakuha. Kasi yun yung nakakalimutan natin before we forget to place where, where our references are. So, parang minsan macha-charge ka ng uh, plagiarism. So, dito di ka macha-charge kasi galing talaga doon. Nandun na din yung credits. And then, nandun na din yung author. Okay? So, ito po yung ating... Um, pag natapos nyo po yan, you can uh, change the view settings. Nalakihan ko ulit. And then, nandito. So, ikiklik nyo po yung... You have to choose either you are going to go public where when people go to your profile, they see it and they can... Uh, interact with it. It's unlisted. So, only the people with the link can see the collection. And private kung ikaw lang. Halimbawa, hindi ka pa, hindi ka pa reading mag uh, release, hindi mo pa reading makita ng buong mundo ang iyong wakelet. Then you can set is it as private and then when you're ready you can uh, let it out. You can also invite people. So, eto. Halimbawa, gusto kong isama dito yung aking co-teacher for collaborative teaching. Same material, different teachers. Halimbawa, grade 9 na English. Apat kayong teacher ng grade 9 na English. You can invite them over. You can give them the link. You can type in their email addresses and assign them as contributor or admin. You can uh, give them the QR code or you can give them the uh, code. So, ito po yung ating pag-share. So, pwede pong uh, uh, makapag-usap tayo sa ating co-teacher. Okay, ma'am, pwede bang yung lesson plan, plan for this week? Ikaw gagawa, ako gagawa nung for next week. Pero isang week lang tayo, dire-diretso, dugtong-dugtong. Pwede po yun. Pwede nyo po itong magamit for collaborative teaching. Okay? And then, uh, dito sa ating settings, andyan din yung uh, sharing, copying the collection. Do you allow others to make a copy? So, kung gusto mo, isa yung, yung ownership ng profile, you can uh, turn this off. Um, kung gusto mo sa collaboration na madelete all items sa, sa wakelet, uh, suggest turn it off. Kasi uh, baka madelete ng iba, wala ka na access. And then, delete the entire collection. It's up to you to Ayaw mo naman yung collection na yan. Na gusto mo na i-remove totally sa yung profile, you can remove. And then, click lang po ang done. Okay. So, sa ngayon, si Wakelet po ay may, uh, ano yan, meron silang uh, share yourself, share Wakelet, express yourself in the form of a collection. So, it's what what are your hobbies and your passion. And you can tag three friends and share it and to enter uh, the swag giving yung swag nila, yung mga t-shirt, yung mga stickers. So, if you're part of the community and you want to join this movement for everybody else to know that you are you doing or using Wakelet, so pwede po kayo dyan. Nasa Twitter po yan ni Wakelet. And then, para dun sa ating output, uh, again, pagtapos ka na, pwede mo nang uh, save yan and then balik ka lang sa home. And then, uh, you can go actually here, and then share. So, ikiklik mo lang tong share. Pakihan ulit natin. Click here and then share. So, kung gusto mo na siyang i-share sa yung social media, you can create a QR code. You can share to your Google Classroom. If you're using Google Classroom, you can share to uh, Teams. You can tweet it as a link. You can uh, make an announcement. Like, ito pa yung ibang mga platform. So, Facebook is one. You, If you want to go offline, you can export it as a PDF. Kaya lang, remember, pag PDF na yan, flat na yan, uh, the links might still work, but the viewing per se, kung video inattach mo, of course, link lang makikita nila. Or embed, if, you're, if you have your your own website, you created your own website or your blog, in which, of which you can actually use Wakelet as your personal blog or teaching blog. Pwede din naman yan. So, paano mo siya embed sa iyong uh, website? Sa school website, if you are... Um, Ano bang pwede? Kung student mo ay in-invite mo over to collaborate and you are the advisor of the school paper, pwede yan uh, i-embed yung inyong mga newsletter sa school website. Bibigyan nyo lang po sa IT, web developer yung embed code, and then they can share. 
Ayan po. Or sa Facebook din. Sa Facebook account ng inyong school, pwede. Okay. So, dahil meron ka ng profile, okay, I am going to give you a uh, STEM, I, I made this STEM enthusiast group. Okay, I will share with you uh, the link so you can, uh, I can invite you over as a contributor. So, ikakopy ko po yung link. And then, I will give to Sir Wax. Sir Wax, last na ito, sir. <laughs> Sorry, ah, namin kong nilalagay. So, ayan. And then, you can put your, those who were able to create uh, a, a profile page, you can uh, go to that and then click edit. Okay, and ang gagawin nyo lang po is you have first is you put your, hindi ko pala nalagay, no? Nakalimutan ko ilagay. Wait lang po. So, ang ilalagay nyo po ay wakelet uh, link ng nag-attend. So, wakelet, wakelet link na lang po ilalagay ko. So, if you are there, you click wakelet link and then, ang gagawin nyo po is add link ng wakelet nyo and then, add text Alam, liit. Add text para ilagay yung inyong um, contact details na uh, generic po, huwag po personal, ano. Uh, pwede pong website ng inyong, name lang po kahit name lang po and then ano yung inyong position ng inyong contact person kasi ito ay public. Baka po ilagay nyo yung bahay nyo at saka yung, yun yung sinasabi ni, ni attorney kanina, be careful what you share. So, name lang po and then the school and then if you want to, um,